Also, I'm not drunk this week. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> get, get some. Oh, hey, you're you're you just, you're just quite hyper when you're drunk, but you had a lot of enthusiasm, so the, you were good. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be gone I love this you. week. I loved your energy. I did talk about cramming pizza in your mouth so you'd shut up for five seconds, but that's neither here nor there. That's just banter, nicknamed- right? The pizza was, know, the pizza was amazing. I didn't, I didn't know you nicknamed it pizza. <laughs> Neil, <laughs> that is a gross nickname for what you're thinking of. That's disgusting. So do you guys want me to start? or? <laughs> yeah, we should leave that in. Can we leave that in? That was, yeah, I like that. My, that was my deep dish pizza. Okay, so welcome to Spine Chill. <laughs> On that note, no. uh, well, I'll let John today. Season 44 of Spine Chill, uh, your favorite variety gaming podcast uh, with an emphasis on asymmetrical mm-hmm. horror. Uh, I'm one of your senior co-hosts, John Wolf, here with Gary the Hot Cross. Hello. Another senior co-host, <laughs> as well as Sinnel Beats. Hi. Hello. And our junior co-host, thank you so much for joining us once again for a 45th straight season. Doug, running man. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Call me Mr. Deep Dish. <laughs> So we got a packed show for you today. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about oh, the God. the new Dead by Daylight Survivor and Killer, as well as the, this new map, this new changes, and all sorts of stuff with uh, DVD. We'll check in with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, new content, Killer Clowns from Outer Space release date and trailer, as well as uh, a continuation of our book club discussions for Alan Wake 2 and Chilla's Art Horror Games, which were picked by Gary last week. Yeah. And we'll also see what Sinnoh picks this week for his book club pick, which I'm very excited about. I'm, I'm, yeah, actually, me too. I'm quite excited as well. I'm quite excited. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're wait. all going to be pleasantly surprised. <gasps> all right, wait with bated breath. Uh, but first, before it. we get into all that, how, uh, how was y'all's week? How, how have you been doing? Uh, mine's been great. I've been having a great week. I am... Um, what have I done? I've managed to not eat any Easter eggs for, like, the whole week. So that's pretty good. That's oh my god. Long. I forgot Easter that's... candy's already out. Yeah, yeah. there's so much oh. of it. And it's... Peep time. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah, Gary... Of... Gary is the one person that is, like, buying it super early. Not because he wants to give people Easter presents. No. But just not because he wants to, you know, there's like children in his life or anything like that. He just likes chocolate eggs. Yeah, they're just, they're so good. I've got two downstairs now. The Cadbury eggs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah they're so Are you good. talking about should... like the hard shell ones or the yeah. cream eggs? Okay. No, like the hard shell ones. I should because I don't yes. know if you get them. In, you don't have them in America, do you? Oh, we have the hard shell eggs, the the little oh. ones. Oh no, we get the big ones. Oh okay. Well, we have the mini eggs, and they have I a hard shell. They're great. I should buy some big ones just so I can bring them to America. Yeah, is that for scale? Is that scale that they're actually that yeah. big? Yeah, like that, that, that. And they just so have we don't have the normal, big ones. Normal places. Yeah, wow. I've had like I've had like easy. I have to try one. Almost around twenty. The ones, the ones you're talking about, John, they look a little bit like dinosaur eggs, right? They're like yes. kind of powder yes. blue ours, and ours pink. Are, yeah, they're pastel yeah. colored. I love yeah. those ones. Oh, they those almost have so like a kind good. of chalkiness to them, but it's very tasty. A like mini eggs. Mini eggs, yeah. Yeah, mini eggs. Like they, I. Even I don't know how they did it, but even the the American ones are good. Like normally the American like Cadbury Hershey chocolate is pretty questionable, but they nailed those for some reason. I might try yeah. some of those. I didn't get the whole American chocolate is bad thing. I've always been told by Americans that UK chocolate is better, but then I went to grocery stores in the US and I was like, I kind of fancy some chocolate, and I was like, it's kind of weird the choice that you have. A lot of it's like very glitzy packaging, but not a lot of chocolate. And yeah. it's like often kind of thin, or it's like Ghirardelli stuff, which is nice, but it's like you eat in like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, Ghirardelli's fine here, but it's like anything Hershey is just not good. That's yeah, weird. and Hershey owns so, so much. I don't know. Yeah. It's like got a weird bitterness to it that I can't stand. <sighs> but it's not. It's not like because like dark chocolate has a bitterness to it, which is delicious. Yeah, it's but not Hershey's that. Just taste. I, I guess it's oh. not really bitterness. It's like a bad aftertaste. That it's yeah. probably like an American thing where it's a cut costs. It's like full of sawdust or something. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, probably. Maybe, yeah. That's probably why. I try. You're tasting the sawdust. What are you guys is uh? What are you guys' feelings on Peeps? Do you guys like Peeps? I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask if Gary was a Peeps man. I've never yeah, had I want to know. I've never I mean, peeped. Can you guys have never peeped? Could you? How long do they last? Can you buy some that I can then try when I come to absolutely, America? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I can. Do they last, off, man? They last. Like, those well, things, they, oh, they, they're immortal, I think, I think. I was going to say, yeah, I think the peeps, peeps that came off the original assembly line are still good to Okay, go yeah. Right I'd, I'd so, like to try yeah, some peeps. Fine. I've never had a chance. 
I'm they're the marshmallow they, things, right? I think you, they are the marshmallow birds. Marshmallow mar birds. Marshmallow bird you things. can you can microwave them. But yeah, they like they like. I, 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 I eat them raw. Right? I eat them raw, but some people <laughs> microwave. Them. I eat them raw. I eat them I, raw. I didn't. Okay. They, I didn't think they were meant to go in the microwave. <laughs> no, that people. It's it's kind of like a secret menu at McDonald's kind of thing. Like people are like, oh, you don't microwave your peeps. Like everybody, they they they, they get all excited about <laughs> sneaky peeps microwaving, but no, nah, it's they're meant to be eaten the way God intended, which is. Fresh and raw. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Buy me some and I'll try them. Still living, one might say. Yeah, lead still on, peeping. Lead alive. Still peeping. Also, I got something really cool um, sent to me. I don't want to talk about it. Come here, toolbox. I got sent this. <gasps> is that for um, Pacific Drive? Yeah, anything? yeah, it is. Oh, it's nice. so cool. I got like is a shirt full, in there. Is it full What's of chocolate? Or oh, no. Oh. Oh. Show it again. Show it again, Gary. What? Okay, yeah. It just it was slightly out of the camera, but that is yeah. legit. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. cool. It's so cool, and it, it came with a shirt which has my name on it. Like really? In Gary, yeah, I'll, I'll, show it it Gary I'll show it to you. Gary, show it Gary to you. or the or the hot? Is it the uh, hot? I got it's Gary because I couldn't have enough letters to get the hot cross. Hmm, I would have liked. Oh, uh, it's like a full toolbox. Like it's, I can use it as neat. a toolbox. They, some had... of the PR packages for these games are really creative and fun. Yeah, it yeah. has um. Like, Gary. My Gary. Name. <laughs> it's cool, right? It looks lovely. It is cool. That is awesome. Can you and hold then... up the shirt for us? The whole thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it like a uniform? Oh. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's you know so what? That's like not bro. bad. That's like actually it seems like good material. Yeah, it's like covered in like the badges and stuff what? from the game. That is neat. So do you wear it while you play it? Uh, I did I did yesterday, yeah. Okay. I didn't say uh, I could be bothered. Because um, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to damage it. But it also came with like. I got a a head bobby lo thing. Love that bird. That's all a bobblehead bird, yeah. Yeah, like shake oh, its head. Man. Yeah, I love it that. Shake its head. Junk in the trunk. And I got what, like a lot a... of bird focused discussion today. I yeah, just I, like I love birds. And then I got like there's something to be careful. Gary Bun, he loves birds. I'm scared True. I'm gonna break it, but this is like one of the coolest things I've ever had. So they sent me this. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa, it's like a little diorama. Whoa. Yeah, a station so, wagon. So, and it's got the little Precious. car from the game. And it like lights up and stuff. It's so cool. That is so cool. That is cool. Wow. It's sick. I love it. Sick, I'm sick very dude. Gonna break it. And then it's sick just nasty. it would be awkward if later in the podcast you're like, so Pacific Drive, what a load of shit that game is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Unfortunately, now we got to talk about the game. So. Made by oh, no. a bunch of hacks, and I hate it. <laughs> no, the game's the game's great. Um, I've heard I've heard only good things about it. There's been yeah, a lot same. Of well, I, I could say some bad things. But of course, it's Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a UI complaint somewhere that you tried to click on a button and it didn't. Oh, God, here he goes. I can already see him. He's revving up. There, there's a lot of UI. There's a lot of things to learn in the game. It's quite a lot of information to take in, and it doesn't always do the best job of teaching you. But once you start figuring it out, it's great. That's probably the main thing. I know, John, you're going to play it, right? Yes, yes. So we can I... probably talk about it in a bit more detail next yeah. time. Yeah, I'm definitely going to start playing it sometime soon. There's um, some other games I'm playing on playing in the next week, like uh, A Brother's Tale of Two Sons remake is coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I never played the original, so I'm like, oh. Oh. I'll have to check that out, yeah. Um, but maybe after that, I'll play some Pacific Drive. Okay, we can save that discussion for like later on. But there's some really cool stuff in it. Can I, can I talk about one thing that I really like that I found out today? Yes, yes. So I thought the game was bugged because my car, the right-hand door kept opening every time I got out of the car. But it turns out there's this system in the game where your car, like, randomly develops quirks. Mm. And oh, like just like in real life. Yeah, and there's a system where you have to, like, figure out what is causing it, and then you repair it. And there's, like, yeah, this long fun. system of having to, like, figure it out. Oh, it's so to, like, good. like, repair, repair your car. That's cool. Yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like it'll make me mad. There's a lot to it. The game's pretty massive. I've got, like, nine hours in it already. I feel like I haven't really done anything. Gary, have you played any other like driving adventure games before like that? Not overly. We're no. in a car for most of the time. Okay. Uh, have you played Choo Choo Charles? By yes. Chance? Yeah. Okay. That's a cool I one. That game. I really I like played Choo -Choo that game. Charles. I played did all four of us play Choo Choo Charles? We did. Oh, <gasps> nice. I like that all game. All four of us play the same single player game? That's, that doesn't happen that's, often. I think that's the first time <clears throat> that's ever happened. Um, <laughs> have you ever played Dead End Road? By any chance? Oh no, I I met the dev though. Really nice guy. Oh, DDD um, wears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to, I need to play that. Like, I think I played the, the I played it at his table. 
I need okay. to play like. That's a sick game. I love that game. Yeah. And then there's there's Fruitiness one coming out. Yeah, definitely. And it's got like I don't know, a really good atmosphere and and, and like world building and stuff. Mm. And then there's that game coming up called Beware that's been in, in the works for like five years now, where you're in a car the whole time. It's like a horror game. Oh, Was really? there another game being made where it's like you pick up? A hitchhiker or something. Is it Reflect Studios was making something? Oh, oh yes, yes. Um, Rides with Strangers. Yeah, they ever come out? I actually have no idea. It has not come out. Okay. Um, Reflect Studios, uh, Adam has made it very clear like multiple times that like he's still working on it. It's their flagship game. He wants it to be perfect. So That's I think... Nice. What, well, there's a lot of controversy about it because people are like, it's never coming out. He took the money from the Kickstarter and he's using it on other games, but like he's making other games to fund Rides with Strangers because he keeps wanting to add more to it. And, you know, I think at this point it's kind of a money pit for him, but uh, I have faith that it's coming out at some yeah, point. Yeah, like maybe he should think about just releasing a version of it and adding the stuff later. Yeah, like early access type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he like he prefers to just one and done it. Which I get it, but like when there's I a get. Kickstarter, like I can I can only imagine the stress. Like I've like I'm stressing out because I've got a Patreon from a YouTube. It stresses me out. So I was like, I can only imagine if you do a Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, I mean it has been like seven years at this point. So. Yeah, like that would. Well, you know, Gary, not not everybody has your like. This is like an a compliment. Not everybody has your like moral foundation and sense of like. You feel an obligation to like. I have this thing. I feel obligated to deliver on this thing. Not everybody has that. Like mm. as part of their core values, right? I was so maybe totally expecting maybe, to get insulted. There. No, no, I'm just <laughs> saying maybe, a maybe idiot like you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the stress levels on someone else with the with a Kickstarter or a Patreon being like, I need my masterpiece to be perfect. Like maybe their stress levels don't come up because they don't feel the same sort of like deep obligation. Like yeah, which I would like, rather they were making a perfect game to be honest. Like yeah. that's they're gonna yeah, make yeah, a yeah. piece of art. I mean. Right. Well, I mean, we're going to talk about art. We'll talk about Alan Wake 2 in a bit more detail later on, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, I ever tell you guys about my experience with Yandere, Dev? No. 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 So, no, you know you how didn't. the Yandere Go. simulator guy over the years has become. He's become yeah. kind of a, a topic of some critique. So to, or, or, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to just go for it. Yeah, he's become yeah, a. Go for the um, throw, dude. A lol cow that people have milked excessively because he says and does kind of stupid things. Well, at one point before yeah. all of this blew up, he was looking for somebody to help translate on a stream like this Japanese game when you're in like a high school and then there's like a little town nearby and you can like walk around. And I think it was like a dating sim that was kind of like Persona almost, but it mm. wasn't really RPG mechanics. It was just like you're talking to people. And it was like really extensive. I had this whole town and he was like quite pushy with me the whole time, even though I was doing it for free. Like at one point I was like talking to him about how it would be like hard to implement this into a game as a solo developer. And he said to me, are you just going to talk the whole time or are you going to keep translating? And I was just like, okay, well, I'm doing this for free. So that's a little bit fucking rude of you to say that. And then eventually wow. he was like asking people if you should put it in the game. And I was like, I don't think you're going to be able to put all of this in the game as a solo developer. It's like total feature creep. He wanted like a day night cycle for like this little village and all this stuff. And right. He, I don't even think Yandere Simulator is considered to be complete. It's even not. Even now. No. And it's just like at the high school. Yeah, because my immediate question would be the shadows. Shadows are intensive. I think if he's doing a night day system, he better be making that efficient. He wants to make oh, all the NPCs have like know. a cycle yeah. and all that stuff. But I think yeah. uh, I haven't played the Andari Simulator, but the general consensus that I've heard is like it's actually kind of gotten worse over the years, and it's just a chaotic mess now. Yeah. Whereas like is it, it kind of it was more basic back in the day a few years ago, but it at least like was somewhat coherent, and now it's just a total mess. If, it's, if they're a solo dev, then you've got to be really cautious with your scope, especially when you start, if you overcomplicate things, code can start causing more problems with other code, and then once you get to go down a rabbit hole of just dominoes of bugs, it can be a bit no. of a nightmare, because I did it. Yeah, he's uh, shown off some of his coding before, and people who know coding have said, like, it's really bad, very inefficient. Like I would never, ever show off the code behind yeah. Night Lights. Never. Yeah, yeah they'd imagine. have to torture it out of you. Yeah, I, I like, I glued that together. It worked. <laughs> That's all yeah, I can say about it. That's true. It. it did work. Yeah. It's just one of those weird experiences where I thought I was going to, I thought I was being helpful. This is before people were like, oh, he's a bit, you know, a bit weird, I would say. Yeah, yeah. 
And I was like, you haven't figured it out. out yet. And then I was like, yeah, oh, why not? to me. Like, so last time said, I translate for free for anyone, frankly. So when people <laughs> said he was weird, you're like, oh, yeah, I could see that because I was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> quietly, that, like, that sitting here in the background, like, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> They'll see. They'll also. First hand experience. And of course, being a forgiving person, I haven't let this go for like almost <laughs> no nine years. No, should you ever? Nine no, years. you should. You should <laughs> never let it go. Yeah. No, and I shan't. Bring it up again next week. <laughs> I will. Yeah, right. we'll, maybe there'll be a, a new we'll thing talk we talk about it again about on the week. Yeah, well, I feel like we have week. never heard it before. We'll be like, oh, <sighs> please tell us more. Yeah, give us all the at, backstory. At and Dairy Dev, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, You're done, anybody, so pal. Anybody, anybody else? Anybody else do anything or play anything cool this week? I I'm not gonna have a lot. Um, I, I started. I, I started playing Detroit Become Human for the first time. Oh, yeah, I, I saw you really? Were the okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts, what are your thoughts on that? I, I've watched it. I've never played it. I've watched like, it's, multiple playthroughs though. It's um. Well, I've only ever played one <laughs> other David Cage game, which is considered widely to be his worst, uh, Beyond Two Souls, and so I wasn't really. <laughs> excited about it when it came out but then it came out and it became like you know it's like you gotta play Detroit you gotta play Detroit and so I was like okay and so I played it you know five years later <laughs> but um I've, I've been having a good time with it um it's very dramatic it, it when it when it hits it hits and when it doesn't it really doesn't so it's kind of all over the place but I I'm enjoying the chaos as well I'll say yeah I played it about a year ago for the first time and I put it as one of my favorite games yeah, mm -hmm. I watched your entire right playthrough, Gary. I went back oh, and yeah, watched. Really? Like, yeah, I went back and watched Boz and stuff. I was, oh, I was shit. really, I was into it. I was into oh, yeah. your playthrough, bro. Yeah, it Gary, name, Gary, you boys. made a Simping you made a name. face when I said Beyond Two Souls was considered bad. Did you like that one? He made a noise too. He made a noise too. <laughs> it was good. I, I really wanted to because Heavy Rain's great. I love Heavy yeah. Rain, and then Beyond Two Souls came out, and oh, okay. it's got a great soundtrack, and there's some really cool ideas in it, and some of the moments are great. It's what yeah. it's a, it kind of similar. Like, when it's great, it's great. And the first. I would say the first third of the game's fantastic. Yes. And then it just I would agree. Kind of goes off the rails. Yeah. And then like it just seems like they were just throwing shit at the wall. It's yeah. the only one it's the only David Cage game. Like I, I love David Cage games sometimes because they're kind of like so bad it's good. And sometimes I'm like, oh actually what they were trying to do here was kind of cool, you know? But Beyond Two Souls is the only one where I was like, I'm bored now. Like yeah. it just goes it on boring. for too long. Yeah, towards the end. Well, there was all that. There was like that military bunker, and I just can't really remember it. It's all a blur for me. The desert adventure goes on for a long time. Desert. I remember the romance yeah. stuff, which I had no investment in. Yeah. yeah. Hello. And then, <laughs> and then Willem Dafoe I'm turns your boyfriend. evil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I it, completely forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, why, David why, Cage, why is he evil now? David Cage loves to put just like random evil men into his stories, especially yeah. if they're a father figure of some kind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have to be evil. They have to There's be probably bad. something to that. I'm yeah, sure some, some trauma. I've only played, like I said, I've only played two of his games, but I've already noticed that <laughs> he loves doing that. Yeah, Detroit is fun. Where did one of you recently say there was an interview where they were like, Detroit isn't about race relations? Yes, I I think I think I talked with you about that because. Um, people in the comments on the first part were telling me that, and I was just, I like, after, um, I've almost completed it now. I'm just like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? It couldn't be more about racial issues okay. if it tried. I, was, I, th I thought one of you would say, like, it's not about, and I was like, that's no, the it, entire story, isn't it? it that's the whole it, it obviously, point. within, like, the first 20 minutes, there's a, there's a part where one of the androids is like, I'm going on the back of the bus. Yeah. The yeah. Sure, yeah. only <laughs> section. And I, I was playing it, and I was like, this is kind of on the nose. Right. Um, so yeah, it's like right away, but like there's one part, um, towards the end of the game where, where a, a black character literally says like, th like how the androids are treated reminds me of how my people were treated. And, and, and when I got to that point, I was just like, David Cage literally wrote that line and then he's going to say, there's no real life parallels to this yeah. game. Oh, so, so he, hang on, he said sense. it. He said he it, said yes. It? Yes. What? Sorry, I, I guess I wasn't clear about what happened. Yeah, David so what is Cage. Yeah, what is it about then? I thought you meant people in your comment section. No, no, no. David Cage right? has no. insisted <clears throat> that the game is only about androids. It's only about their fictional struggle, and there's no real life parallels that he or or politicizing that he was uh, making with it. Wrong. Okay. But but like I said, there's a character. <laughs> there's a Wrong. there's a black character that literally draws the parallel. <laughs> 
Did he? Did he plagiarize? Did someone have else guys, write it? Yeah, right. Have you, <laughs> right? Have you guys seen know. that? Have you guys seen the recent thing that happened on X or Twitter? Like the whole the whole thing about like the person who tweeted out about uh, Starship Troopers and how like oh, they, they yeah. like they totally missed the idea, the mark that it was like because it's kind of has to do with like Hell Divers too and the whole concept of like it's like satire, hmm. and, right? I don't know, like I, that kind of. I, I feel like that draws like a parallel to this conversation too, is like completely missing marks, like on what something's like actual subtext is, like, like I don't know, maybe I'm reaching a little bit on this one, but no, yeah, it I sounds really, it's kind of a similar thing of just yeah. like no media literacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's like, frightening, I, frightening concept, but it's becoming more and more apparent that a lot of people they really like, it, you, they need the basics you know they really need have some you, basic have you, seen, I, have you seen the film idiocracy like we're just getting yes. to the point where people don't get yeah. anything anymore like it's just, actually, it just doesn't even land i actually recently rewatched that and i was like oof it's more real now than ever it sucks right, yeah. yeah what's oh, going on yeah, idiocracy oh, yeah. i think you'd like it gary it's kind of silly you but would. also it's kind of cunty so you'd love it oh it is. That so, the, so the idea alley. so the idea gary is that there's an average guy from our era who gets like frozen and he wakes up in the future and he's the smartest man in the world because everyone's so stupid. Okay, yeah. that's funny. Like yeah. society is just degraded, yeah. so everybody's become a yeah. fucking idiot. It's a, they're it's they're Mike, way it's, it's Mike Judge who, who wrote and directed. The guy who did like Silicon Valley and Beavis Office and Space. And stuff. Okay, Office oh, Beavis yeah. and Butt. Yeah, he's, it's fantastic. It's very oh, yeah. iconic. Oh, I speaking of AI, by I'll the way. I'll watch it for next week. Uh, did you hear? Yeah, apparently, Chat GPT has like gone off the rails. Yeah, no. yeah, really? yeah. It's like somebody has poisoned yeah. the well. Oh, it's, and it's, it's, it's going, it's, it's going it's insane. Chat a, is Chat GPT a Nazi now? <laughs> That's always yeah. what ends up happening with these. Like, I don't know what. Ha I don't know if they've like fixed it now, but apparently, it's like somebody got inside Chat GPT's head, I guess, so to speak, colloquially, and it started to just spout nonsense. Like, people can't yeah. get it to be coherent at the moment. Ooh. It's lost its oh, mind. Did you see that it's open beautiful. AI thing? Those, those like short clips that have gone out that they've been generating with it. No. Oh, I hate oh, it. oh, those, oh, those video, the video yeah, AI. Yeah, the little yeah. goblin and the I think it's a candle that's playing with or something. The little. Oh, I haven't the... seen any goblin videos. I've just seen like AI videos of them being like, "This is the future." This yeah, like is a, what there's, AI like, can there's like a cat. There's like a cat waking someone up. They look a bit wonky still, but they're oh, they're getting so much oh, better. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was, yeah. was like the, there was like the, the group of like golden retriever puppies that like looked super realistic. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. Are there AI? Nice video. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's amazing. Like this time last year, people were just posting AI images, and it was kind of a joke because they'd be like, "That person has five fingers," and we're already to the point now where it's like. It's it's getting to the point where it's almost indecipherable sometimes. Yeah, I saw. Oh, yeah. I saw I saw a before and after video of like Will Smith eating spaghetti. <laughs> like what, yeah. what AI was able to create five years ago, a year ago, and then like now. And it's yeah. like like you like John, you said, like it's just the 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 bucket it keeps doubling and yeah. the, the technology keeps getting more and more like like it's getting scary. Like here in a few years, I don't know what it's gonna be doing. Um, exactly. deep fakes. Yeah, deep fakes. Yeah, deep fakes are scary. Yeah. The whole thing is just like honestly. Uh, I think there needs to be some laws passed quick because otherwise oh, this is going to yeah. spiral out of control. But the problem is, is that there's a bunch of 80 year olds in, in Congress and they have no idea that this is even an issue, I bet. So yeah, yeah. they don't even know what's going on. Won't be until it's Agreed. too late. And then there's, there's these weird people that keep going, but look, what they, they, they're analyzing me like, here's what's wrong with it, though. Look at the lighting on the nose. It doesn't make any sense. I'm like, that's great. But the AI will figure that out. Yeah. yeah. Great. You're saying that you can still decipher it's, this AI, but most people can good. and give it a year and it, it will have learned. All of those things you're pointing out, and it will be yeah. indecipherable. The problem the pro is ethical. Ethically, it's wrong. It doesn't have to be shit right. to have legitimate problems with it, you know? Like, yeah. even well, if it's good. It's, it's already fooling the technologically illiterate. Like, you know, we're, right. we're on the internet constantly, so we're able to look <laughs> at it and spot things. But, like, boomers on Facebook, they have no idea. They look at yeah. these these images of, like, these... It, imaginary houses that AI creates like out in the mountains and stuff and they're just like stunning, gorgeous yeah. amazing and it's like it's not fucking real 
And you know what? I'm starting to think that neither are you, based on your comments. I I have been enjoying the AI bros, though, like getting very defensive of people using the same prompts as them. They feel like when they put a prompt into an AI generator, they own that, and then they get very upset when people steal them, ironically. And then I saw a great uh, tweet of some guy claiming that he had, you know, he generated some one piece animation was like, look how good this is. And then someone told him it was crap and that he wasn't an artist. He got very defensive, told him they they, they couldn't create something as good as this. Then he pointed out that he, no, he pointed out, actually, no, I work on the show. I am the animator. Oh my God, for that's amazing. Amazing. His name is that's actually amazing. in the credits yeah. of One yeah, Piece. Yeah, he pointed it out, and yeah, it's oh, like a right that. Yeah. Oh, so that. amazing. That's so good. Actually, I could create something like this because I did. Yeah, I'm the this guy that main. does it. Yeah. <laughs> They're not that's a so good, man. creatively bankrupt grifter yeah. with no skill or talent. Um, yeah. I was the first to type anime big tits. Get your own. Oh, are we on anime big tits again? I can't wait. I just, I mean, I just this anime, segment. Yeah, I mean that's this is a weekly segment now. Yeah. Anyway. your first prompt. <gasps> in the, in the Copyright. Sit on beats. Anime big tits. <laughs> you got to frame that. You got to frame yeah. that. First <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna get like a LCD lighting behind me. Anime big tits. Yes. <laughs> I stand. Uh. Yeah, there was the there was the recent the the one of the recent ones I saw on Twitter that was really funny was Elon Musk was there was one about Grok, and there was like a takedown of somebody that was criticizing Elon Musk and he like retweeted it or he act he interacted with it and then somebody was yeah. like bro like the entire thing he's calling X Twitter in this takedown it was really really good like it just kind of roasted him really hard because he's been complaining about people he calls oh, it dead naming yeah. Twitter. He's like, I don't dead it. name X. It's tw- it's not Twitter anymore. That's why I always it's call it Twitter because and then and then Grok it called it Twitter. Angry. Yeah, his yeah. AI in the takedown of the guy criticizing him kept calling it Twitter, and it's like, dude, you can't <laughs> even convince your AI to call it X, bro. Like, anyways, Twitter is like honestly the most dead internet place on the web. Like, I feel like there's so it it's just overrun with bots now. Yes, I've oh, never true. seen it. So I, get, bad. I get added true. so many like yeah. every day. There's like I'm getting added by a bot. Yeah. And you know what's day. crazy is that like I tried to make I, I was just like because he's always Elon's always talking about how like we've made it impossible for bots to get here and I'm like clearly not. <laughs> yeah, okay. I tried to just make like a random Twitter account with like without putting in my phone number or whatever, like just on a burner email or whatever. And they make you do like the hardest captcha shit in the world. I had to do twenty of them in a row. It made me do math. It was like <laughs> add together the out. darts. To uh to make the number that appears, and I had to do it twenty times. It took like what the fuck? like five to ten minutes to do it, and if you miss even one of them, it makes you start all the way over. And I did it three times because it said I got one wrong, and I was like, I thought I did them all right, and so I was just like, I guess I'm not making that random Twitter account. He, and so I don't know how only, the bots are only, doing it. He only wants right? bots because the bots have no problem figuring yeah, that the bo- out. Yeah, the bots are the bots are breezing yeah. through it, but real people like me can't do it. That's I'm good at math. Dude. I couldn't do <laughs> it. Yo, thank Crazy. God. Thank God I have a legacy account or I'd never get on Twitter. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'd be though. locked out forever, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think it's because I didn't put in a phone number, so maybe the bots are just putting in like, you know, uh, VoIP numbers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, know, yeah. Getting around yeah. it. But what's WhatsApp uh, numbers or something? Yeah. yeah. But I was that just like, Yeesh. I'm sorry, there actually was a bus in this image. It's just inside the forest and you missed that. Start yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. You could yeah, see I the very bump. back of the yellow bumper right here in the corner. <laughs> well, you guys want to talk about DVD? We got I guess we have to now. <laughs> exactly. we, we finally uh, have, we finally have, have to about DVD. Yeah. Yeah. You guys want to? I mean, it's honestly, a, there's a lot of really exciting, exciting stuff though. for DVD. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's true. It's um, a great, great week. Who wants to start? DVD. And where do we start? It's, there's so much to talk about. Uh, well, new Survivor and Killer. Do we want to talk about new map? New map. Yeah. Yeah, I put I played a lot. You guys played a lot, right? Who played Who played a lot? Anybody? I played about two hours, yeah. so not much. I usually don't oh, like playing okay. the PTB I play, very much. I played I played five oh. hours of the PTB. I played so much that I have my uh, my unknown Prestige Seven, <laughs> so I played a lot. I oh I didn't God. stream it. I just played off stream like the day before I went back to work. I played him a ton. I thought, Did you like yeah, the unknown? Look. Then I'm guessing. Yeah, I loved. I'm guessing him. you liked. Him. I loved him. I loved him. I loved. I I think everything about this chapter screams like. And again, you're gonna you might I'm simping a little bit, but it's it's like as good as an anniversary chapter. Like this is every bit as good as the Singularity chapter was. 
and we're it's, getting this update in a, in a March. It's mm. just phenomenal. The the killer design is interesting. It's like good without being OP. I think it's gonna have. It's like again, I would I would call him <clears throat> his direct comparable to Singularity in terms of like you're gonna have to work really really hard to be okay at him to be like an okay killer because he's not an S tier killer. He's he's kind of no. mid. But he doesn't, he, and not every killer needs to be an S tier. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. does remind me so a like, lot of the Singularity because he can teleport and he's got kind uh-huh. of like a funky little ranged yeah. glob that he throws out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know it's an e- it's an easy comparison, but it's the same kind of net effect. I think that people are going to get insane at him and be really, really good, which is still going to make him be like a lower A, upper B tier killer. But again, who cares? Because most people suck at DVD, so you're going to do fine. You're going to have yeah. fun, and you're going to play the guy, <laughs> and he's got incredible. The the aesthetic is incredible. He's super creepy. He's super cool looking. Super interesting. The survivor I love how weird is he get- is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, yeah. strange. Uh, the I perks- like that it runs okay. a bit like a titan. That's like my favorite thing. Yeah. That's so yeah. bizarre. I- Got a goofy walk. I like that this is like um, our first like real monster killer since the dredge, mm-hmm. and I hope that they continue moving this direction for their original chapters because I. I don't play as the Dredge or anything, but I really like his design. He's probably my favorite, like, designed original killer uh, in the past few years. And mm. I like how weird and monstrous the, the unknown is. And the vocal lines that he just right? pulls out. So good. So I've good. I've got candy. I've got candy. Like, oh, Jesus. Like, <laughs> fuck away from there was, me. <laughs> there was one point when I was playing, and he was, like, stealthed. And I just heard him around the corner be like, and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and I dig, I dig the aesthetics too. Like when you, when you like stare him down or you stare down the, uh, the husks, you know, he has the husks yeah. to teleport. Yeah, yeah. It like, it like blurs the cam. It like makes it, it's like, it's I love really that, like, like, it ch- turns the camera's position to like stare more intently yeah. at the faces. Yeah. Well. yeah so it's, it like it blurs cool in, it focuses in. It just, it just kind of makes it feel really like immersive. Like when you're going and, and, and when he like... teleports into the husk while you're doing it, ah, you know, yeah, I hate it. Yeah, it happened every twice. Time, right? Didn't yeah. like it. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think I think it's a, a huge win. And then again, if the leaks are to be believed, this is what we have to expect for the rest of the year. It's going to be all classic horror tech killers. Like they're going to be really kind of leaning back into that for their um, for their release cycle. So that's good because awesome. like I, I hate to be like to the xenomorph and Chucky, like the two biggest licenses that we've kind of wanted for a long time i guess yeah i mean at least in eu no one's playing them um no one plays them and i don't like yeah. playing against them particularly or playing as them i find them both kind of boring no yeah i agree with the, i'd agree that they're and that the problem is that and what I, what I see the problem being is that we're all excited about the killer we're all excited about the chapter this chapter will flop in terms of like we're not going to see people playing the unknown it's not mm-hmm. going to be a very high play. He's going to be played about as much as the Singularity and the Twins at the end of the day. Because people are going to play Blight. They're going to play Nurse. They're going to play Wesker. They're going to play Wraith. Right. They're going to play Killer. They're either going to play Killers that are okay, strong. Billy S2, the S2. Yeah, or Billy. There you go. Billy's the new. Billy's the new. Oh, man. We can talk about Billy later. Because I know Gary's got some things to say, and I got some stuff, too. But no, you're going to see people playing the ones that have high return for low effort. You're not going to see right. them. guys like Singularity, guys like The Unknown are medium return for maximum effort you know you need to you need to be on your fucking adderall you need to have your g fuel and your rogue energy you need to be ready to like lock in to get a 2k with these guys right in the current meta and what's going to happen is people are going to go back to their comfort characters almost immediately Mm -hmm. and we're not going to see the guy it sucks because again they put a lot of time and effort into the killer and it's super awesome and i'm going to play it a lot and i'm sure there will be a few people out there that'll p100 him and be like oh my god i'm a unknown man but at the end of the day He's not well, going to be a major player in the DVD community in the meta. I think no. that's okay though, because like I feel like Xenomorph and Chucky's jobs were like to bring in new players. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the unknown's job is to like make people that have been playing the game and that uh are already like knee deep in it to be like, yes, this is cool. This is why I want more of great job behavior. So they're kinda playing both sides with that, which I think they kinda need to. So I'm yeah, not every chapter has to be a bestseller. I know I'm not like a stakeholder in the in the company, well, so it's yeah, easy for me yeah, to say yeah. that. But well, you know, just well, from a player's chapter, perspective, the chapter is going to sell though because we haven't started say. talking about we haven't started yeah. talking about Sable yet. Yes, yeah, Sable. Who, Avril Lavigne is in the game. Six. Avril, <laughs> Sable. I will Goth say this GF. now: one year from now, 
One year from now, Sable will be the second most played survivor in DVD after Fung Min. She will mm. she will be the most common survivor outside she's a big of hit. Fung Min. Who's who's she's going to be? She's going to be popular. People are. I was on the PTB. I told you guys I played the PTB for like a billion hours, right? I yeah. I went I went through an hour plus of games where nobody played anything but Sable. Like I just yeah. only saw Sable, and that's never happened to me on the PTB. The Nick Cage PTB, people were playing fucking leon and playing like random people That's you know crazy. and yeah. he was he was the only character release and in 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 hours i played saw nothing but sables like she is she's gonna be so popular she's got no, the she's aesthetic a... people love she's well designed she's got cool lore with michaela and people are like I, people are just about it dude and no, no it's great I, honestly like she's probably the first survivor in a year and a half or so that i've been super interested in i just think she looks really yeah. cool i like I like her vibe. Uh, whereas, like recently with the other ones, like I don't know, Gabriel and I just no one cares. <laughs> I mean, I she's like Tarisha, Tarisha, she, but... she's the first survivor since Yoon Jin that might have some fun fashion stuff to play with. Exactly, yes. I think that's why I'm excited unique. about it. Yeah. Yeah. unique fashion, right? Things we haven't seen before. In other yeah, games. not even with Michaela because Michaela has that kind of witchy vibe thing, but she hasn't really leaned in on it outside of that one Halloween set that she has yeah, everything else is just purple she just wears purple yeah she's just yeah, kind of like she's, yeah she's like I what's her face in, in in what in breaking bad what's her name hank hank's wife oh marie 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 she was yeah. purple right marie. yeah she always yeah. wears purple yeah That's right. she's kind of marie yeah i think i think michaela it, it kind of seems like they made her originally to be like the witchy vibes girl and then I have a theory that like the behavior works so far ahead that they kind of eased off on the witchy goth vibes with Michaela so that they could give Sable more of a unique look because that, that that makes sense to me with the timeline. But I'm I'm happy with that. I'm happy with Sable. I I need them to having... add some more voice lines into old characters like Michaela so that we can hear them in the lobby communicate. Yes, that's what I'm really hoping for. I'm hoping yeah I'm hoping that they continue <clears throat> to add vocal lines and stuff because. They all need to talk at this point. It's weird when yeah. they don't. Yeah. Except on that Dwight. Note, Dwight can on say that, nothing. On that note, I saw a voice line for the first time. Uh, I was playing Chucky the other day, and Nick Cage is in my lobby, and he went, hey, I know that guy. And I've never heard that one before. Ooh, oh, oh really? Talking, he was talking about Nick Cage. Yeah, because Nick that's Cage, cool. it was See, pretty cool. So there was three survivors in the lobby. It was just three. And then Nick Cage came in, and then he said the voice line. I'm like, wait, he just said that because Nick Cage joined. And that was really cool. So That is nice neat. Touch. Yeah, I like that they're starting to do that more and more with the voice line. It's good stuff. When I saw Sable for the first time, I was like, oh my god, they got John. They got him back. Yep, they <laughs> got me back. Honestly, like, I'm I'm kind of excited about the game a little bit, which hasn't happened in a while. It's yeah. cool. The characters are just important to me. I need to have characters that I like. Yeah. You like, need to dress up Barbie. Exactly. That's the joy. Exactly. The and new like, map's cool as well. Oh, yeah, yes. the, the new map is yeah. really cool. Greenville Square. You know, yeah. I I talked about this a little bit on the subject of TCSM, but this DVD's got this same problem, is people get locked in on a problem, and then when the devs actively work on that problem and actively improve upon that, they, like, refuse to stop the narrative. And they just continue to push this narrative. And I keep seeing people complaining about the map team, and I'm like, they've literally just put out bangers oh, yeah. for the last few maps. Like, Tobo was, was great. Nostromo yeah. was great. The map reworks are great. This new map is great. Can we can we get rid of the dated theory that the map team sucks and they're doing a bad job? The the Colwyn rewakes anybody? Colwyn re mm. reworks great. I, re I remember being very concerned age, about them. As soon so as I was, like, was playing around, I was like, these are great. The Macmillan changes. I love all of those. Yeah, yeah. they've aged so well. It's, and, we we've come a long way since Shattered Square. Yes. With yes. Knight. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Garden of Joy and, and the shit and, Square like. Garden of Joy is still terrible, but Shatter yeah, Square, yeah, yeah. even even Shatter Square's rework and update has made it better. It's I wouldn't put it in the top. I mean, if we did another map tier list, we, Shatter Square would be down in the C D tier probably. But they're like, yeah. that map used to be F tier. That used to be one of the worst maps in the game. Still hurts my eyes, and it's improved. And it's it's ugly to look at, but from a from a game balance perspective and a and a, and a accessibility for players perspective, I think it's great. Mm. Much better, much better. Sorry, I will say, going back to the new map, Square, so oh, good. No, sorry, I had a, I had like a random idea, but but keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back later. Oh, I was gonna say like I've got a. What I really appreciate about the new map is it's got some very creative palette like loops. Um, there's like a couple that like 
The double, there's there's a double, yeah. a double palette whip, which we've never had before. Yeah, they're and so then, fun uh, to play on and, both sides. And the like... main building is really fun as well. It's not like hmm. strong; it's just so enjoyable. If you slam down the palette in the arcade, it like makes the machines go off with a high score. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. The and arcade is so cool. I really, I really like going as the unknown to the urinals because he has that neck thing that that dip. Yeah, I, wa- comes out. I watched you. I watched you have a piss, Gary. I watched you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> that's like my favorite moment. Um, but yeah, the map's really cool. I just, I really like it. I think uh, it's quite great. I will say the sign where it's like blue and pink, which is you know I, I love that color combination. But it did just make my heart go. Oh, I want a trickster map still. That's exactly what I did. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this seems like them apologizing for not having a trickster map. Like it's not I, too late. They could go back. They could go back and give us one, bro. Give, if they would... gave us like a trickster related character, like a Yunjin trickster related character, they could bring the map back. Like and the, they could go. Kinda they could do it in the Wizard Isle. Put oh, loads yeah. in there because they could just have floating bins and stuff again. Like I, I love that. When I first yeah. started playing that map, I was like, oh, this would be great as like in the like make it as an alternative to Garden of Joy. And it took me about an hour to realize that it was part of that. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> it's realm. Really slow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the map, I didn't realize the, that. It's it's phenomenal. It's ten out of ten map. I also like the small oh, yeah. details, like Michaela and Sable's names being on the statue. Really yeah. nice touch. I'm graffitiing a statue. And I like I like little tiles like that. Like <laughs> the statue, sh- the statue tile is fun. It's a fun tile. It's interesting. It's, it's it reminds me of the the main lobby on Nostromo with like the big circle and the palette mm. there. Like there's this. It's yeah. just like new. It's like new ways to play the map. Is really cool. Like you talk about the double palace, John. That is so fucking cool, and it's fun yeah. to play against. It's fun to play that as killer too, because it's like, you know, the game's the biggest issue with the game is that the gameplay loop and the site has been it's very repetitive, and we've been doing the same things for so long. It's like, oh, here's an LT wall. Here's a jungle mm-hmm. gym. Here's mm-hmm. the killer shack. Oh, oh, cool. My emotional sport tile. I'm going to the killer shack like over yeah. and over again, <laughs> and having some interesting new tiles to play is just refreshing on both sides. You know, it just makes the game feel a little fresher. And True. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. The new map is I'm in, I'm in love. And again, with the reworks of the maps that have gone in the past, the last few new maps between Toba and Nishomo and now Greenville, they've just been putting out bangers. And I have no more. I remember years ago, maybe a year ago on, on spine chill, we were like, we have no faith in the map team. Anytime a new map is announced or a rework is announced, we're like, well, this is going to suck worse. Yeah. They're just, true. they just suck. And I can't at this point it's, they haven't, they haven't missed. Garden yeah. of Joy's re- Garden of Joy is still kind of bad, and the rework yeah. wasn't great. But like, they also yeah. don't have to be perfect, right? Like, they're not going to be perfect. They, ju- they just need to go through that map and just change some of the walls and stuff. Really, like it, it wouldn't be. It's not a big fix for them that map, in my opinion, because most of it's no. fine. And it's um, also not that bad, like in my opinion. It's yeah, not, like just it's not me, as bad. You know that you know that window in the dining room. Yep. Yeah. I just close that. Close it. Problem solved. Yeah, that, that's really that. the big outstanding issue. Still, mm-hmm. is that window? Yeah. Just block that. The, re- the, other, the other window um, can stay, the one that's like on the on the, the left hand side or the back of the house. Like yeah, the, one the that back, back side. That was yep, fine. Yep, yep, agreed. The window you know, upstairs just, is perfect. Uh... The, the, the god window always connects to a jungle gym on the outside, which makes yeah. it insane. And there's a there's a safe pallet, a god window, and a jungle gym every single time the map loads. Yeah, you could basically yeah. loop that three times, then use the jungle gym, and then if you need yep. to, you can use that pallet, and you can get another three loops. It's like, ugh. Yep. Just block yep. that window, problem solved. Exactly. Just breaking door is needed. Oh, it's not like a skill repa- issue. Replace it with breakable wall. I need four slowdowns. Am I, am I knowing? So. Yeah, they, yeah. Could just, they could just put a breakable wall there instead. True. Like I said, the window. Mm. Put a new staircase that goes down. Yeah, yeah, they could do that too. It's a simple fix, and even with the window, the map is not the worst map in the game. So. Yeah, everything else yeah. is fine. Like everything else around the map seems fine to me. Yeah. They just need to get. They just need to fix Gideon's bro. I mean, they need to take that map out of the game. I wish they'd lose the saw license. There, I said it. <laughs> then they can just get rid of. Well, Gideon. not doing anything else with it. I would. I oh, would like to just see, remove I the pig. S- I would like to see them get another saw killer. I would like to see jigsaw. More. That's what I would like to see. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Whole tricycle. Because oh, they, they can, yeah. get, they get, have, get like Billy in it. They could have jigsaw, and they could reuse the jigsaw boxes, but have them be like different or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like a different trap. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. I would like to see Gideon's changed a little bit as well. I think it'd be good to I, revisit I just, how many I, pallets are on that map. And I mean, it feels like you could do some really creative things with Saw. Yeah, like I especially, genuinely, especially with like the Stromo thing with the levers <clears throat> and the the slowdown 
gas yeah. smoke thing. Like you could do some interesting things, I think, in some of those rooms. I just mm-hmm. genuinely think that Gideon's is the only actual problematic map left in the game. Like Azeroth's off the top, well. off, the, off the top of my head, is Azeroth problematic? Is that yeah, that one where it's like there's three gens on one side, there's three gens on the other side, there's one oh, in the middle. Oh yeah, the, the three I, gen twins. Did, yeah, yeah. That map Didn't sucks. they like fix that at some point? Because I swear at some point, I played that and I was like, there's no longer yeah. like that problem with the gen in the middle. But then it's like it got reverted. Maybe no, I just I, imagined it. No, I've not. Like they have moved it a little bit. Sometimes it's four gens on one side and three on the other side. Mm, it's like okay, mm-hmm. so it's the same problem. Just right. it's like, it, the map's just a, it's the most symmet- like well, I remember doing a video on it on YouTube, and it's like I realized it's the most symmetrical map in the game, which is why it's a problem. Yes, because every other game has all this asymmetry to it, which keeps it you know randomized. This is the only map where you can go into it and go, well, I know where all the gens are roughly. <laughs> If yeah. I want a three gen, I can. Yeah. It's a great calm um, map. <laughs> I think I remember watching you play that on comp yeah, with Freddy. Freddy. You watched you play Freddy, yeah. yeah. And it was they watched me like, win by fucking camping next to my ruin totem. Yes, yeah. you did see oh. that. That's that's a balanced map to me, boys. <laughs> um, yeah. Real quick, we probably should also talk about the uh, changed killers as well, because there were a lot of killer oh, changes. Yeah. Uh, as a quick mentioning pig. They've been changed a little bit. Kind of the the reverse bear traps have been nerfed, but the M2 has been buffed. Seems like a fine change to me. Like it won't really make a difference to her play style outside of, you know, people still have to try and get the traps off their head. They've got a bit more time to do it, but the M2 seems stronger. So I like All it. All right. So I want to talk about Pig when I talk about Huntress because I think that behavior is cooking right now. And I think that those two changes are very, very much connected. So mm. yeah, I, I agree that you're right. They they nerfed the reverse bear traps, which were never supposed to be a kill condition in the first place. It's literally just a slowdown. Um, they can kill you if you ignore them. It's I, mm. again, I think it's similar to the Sodico tapes, how the Sodico tapes and the, how the Sodico condemn is supposed to work. It's not ever actually supposed to kill people. It's supposed to slow the game down because the killer has bad chase. Like yeah. pig's not great in chase. Sodico's not great in chase. So we add this secondary objective that keeps the game manageable for a killer with bad chase. Um, so yeah, great change. Now the pig can't see their boxes. They have a much harder time tunneling boxes, which is like kind of the preferred play style of the bad player that plays pig. Yeah. The dash got a little stronger. I played her. I thought the dash was all right. I'm sure that people will get pretty good at it and put some clips out and have a good time with the pig. So yeah, W change for pig, I would say. Huntress, on the other hand, yeah. got probably a the most controversial mass- one. Massive buff. Yeah. And yeah I don't so- know why. Plus two maximum hatchets, uh, so she starts with seven now, and you can get yep. up to ten if you bring infantry yep. belt leather lube. Um, in addition, I thought that was the only change when I played her, and I was just like, wow, ten hatchets, that's crazy. And then I started, like, throwing them, and I was like, something is crazy now, what is it? And I was like, the wind-up's faster, and that was yeah. interesting, but also, what puts it over the top is the fact that she now moves faster with the hatchet out, I believe she moves at 3.54, which before it was like 3.3 or something like that. So kind of a massive boost there. Huge. And like when you play as her and you're moving with the hatchet out, it's like, I mean, it, they that can't go live, in my opinion. That's got to that's gotta go back. It might. It might. Well, when, because I was saying just for the like, behavior in my chat for a bit, and I was like, can you just tell me why Huntress has been, like, why... She's been addressed in any way or form because she's like a right. solid A tier killer, right? Like yeah, she was already. She's nice I, and simple. One of the best design killers. Um, I would say I wouldn't say A tier, but I would say like she's right smack dab in the middle. Like I mm. think they could have just not done anything to Huntress and she would have been fine. Yeah, no, I don't like, disagree. But they didn't but, give me an answer. They they didn't come back to tell me why. So because don't they don't want to tell you. They don't want to tell you, Gary. Gary Bun. We hear a behavior or balancing behavior around the middies and the baddies. We're we're making the game more accessible for the middies and the baddies because they're the ones who are buying skins and playing our game. But they're gonna make right. me not like Huntress, and she's like one of they my are. She they is are. my favorite. They're making. To face, they're making. And... Gary, you've already seen the writing on the wall. Gary the hillbilly, a fucking mm-hmm. a fucking brain dead like toddler, a little toddler, come getting home from school can play Billy in 4K now. Like they're making everything so easy. They want Billy easy. They want Huntress easy. They want Pig. You want it to be easier to go against Pig. They want it to make it harder. They're making the game. They're now overtly and directly making the game more accessible for bad players and for medium like <laughs> casual players, which I this don't is... think is a bad thing for the game. But I do think it sucks for guys like us who play the game 40, 60, 80 hours a week. Right. This is Doug's like, idiocracy moment. 
It is, bro. That the it's going to keep happening too. It's going to keep happening. Billy, they made Billy brain dead easy. They made they're making Huntress brain dead easy. They're making playing against Pig a lot easier for people. It's it all comes down to the fact that forty thousand plus people play the game concurrently, and the streamers and the dudes like us who do podcasts and shit. We are the point one percent of the player base, but they're not balancing the game around us. They're balancing the game around everybody who plays it, and what that means is that the people who do play it at that point one percent are gonna just get handed free shit like billy i can literally fucking sleepwalk 4ks on billy right and i'm bad at hillbilly i'm a genuinely bad hillbilly player d tier billy at best and i can just sleepwalk my way through 4ks on like strong four-man teams there are still teams out there that dunk on me right but those guys are also in that point one percent they play the game that's what they do they play dvd they they wake up and they play dvd but your average players the after work crew the after school crew the weekend crew nah man you dunk on them with Billy now. He's free. Yeah. He's easy. And that's what they're doing with Huntress. They're going to do the same thing. Even if they change what they're doing now, they're not going to revert her back all the way. Because Huntress was a niche pick. If you play Huntress and you're a midi or a baddie or a casual, you're getting dunked on because she's hard. She's got a high skill cap. She's hard to play. So they're like, okay, we'll just, we'll just babushka base kit and we'll make her fucking run when she's hard, got her hatchet up. And then people that are bad at the game can hit hatchets, poggers. Good for them. This, I think I think what annoys me is that sorry go ahead Sino. it's just I feel like sometimes they nerf or buff multiple aspects of one thing all at once so like one perk that has like multiple different things about it they'll nerf every part of that perk and it becomes like <coughs> D tier immediately or yep. like with the hunters it's like she runs faster when she has the hatchet she has more hatchets and all this stuff and it's like you don't have to buff like every right. single part of her all at once yeah that, that was my thing when I was playing her, is I was like, all three of these? Like, I can understand one, or maybe two, but mm -hmm. all three is, like, crazy. Right? And what annoys me about it, you know, to Doug's point, is that, yeah, this is uh, affecting and, and targeted at people who are bad at Huntress, but I just, I just have a funny feeling that when I play against people who are bad at Huntress, they're gonna hook somebody and stand next to them with a the hatchet up. Still. So, yeah. that yeah. frustrates me that she's gonna be... Even better at doing that. <laughs> what worries me is that Huntress is one of the few killers that I feel like, even in my MMR, like I can play and not need to bring Gen slow down because mm. she's so effective. Like yeah, you can just bring I... Aura stuff and you can just play yeah. her well. Um, That's true. And now she's going to be so much stronger. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I am. I am worried. And like, and like the Ralphs of the world are going to be, <sighs> you know. Even, oh yeah, even more unstoppable yeah. than they were before. You know, the the yeah. coconut RTSs out there. Um, so that's gonna be frustrating too as a survivor. <laughs> yeah, because she's already a tough killer to go against. Like people who know well, what they're doing with hatchets, like right. tough. Well, it's it's fun. Like you were I saying, love her. Gary, I think she's great. Like, but... like you said, Gary, like he just comes out of like out of left field. They just randomly buff the huntress. Same thing with Billy. Billy was like reworked, and then they just were randomly like, oh, we're gonna also buff the shit out of him randomly. Mm. Like they just made his they made yeah. his uh, curve window way bigger out of nowhere. Like what are they? What? Are, why? Like and now it's like who, pretty miserable going up against Billy. Like I'm at a point where I'm like, I might just start dying on hook against him. Yeah. I, and like, people, people, John, you hated him beforehand. I right? did. Yeah. I, I get did. it now. Like I'd rather like I've never had so many killers go above nurse and like the list of I don't want to buy against them. <laughs> like there's so many now. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I I've always been a hillbilly hater. I I everybody was always like Billy's so fun to play against, and I'm like, what Billy's are you playing against? Because the guys that I play against are miserable. They're not fun. But people I have had actively, fun games against hillbilly, but it's very rare. Yeah, pe people are actively DCing and going next on my hillbilly now. Like I, probably at a similar yep. rate to Skull Mer to Skull Merchant. When I Who play Skull is the killer with the highest kill rate now? Skull Merchant. Oh yeah, they released yeah. the kill rate stuff. That's because oh, everyone gives up. That's because everyone yeah, gives up. I, no one wants to play Can I do a mini Marketing. rant about those stats? Well, you guys do your thing, and let me admit, let me rant about those stats after you're done. My takeaway from the stats was that, like, you know, you you see these kill rates, and like Skull Merchant's at the top, right, with like seventy percent or something. Yeah. And then you see like Sadako is next, and then you see Freddy up there, and you're like, Freddy, Freddy's one of the worst killers in the game. How does he have such a high kill, uh, kill rate? And I think it's it's one of those things that's skewed a lot by low MMR and people that are bad at the game because these killers like Freddy have an incredibly low skill ceiling. Freddy probably has like the lowest skill ceiling of any killer in the game. And so, you know, it doesn't take much to to do well as Freddy, especially for new players. And so that's probably where all the high kill percentages are coming from. Yeah. 
And Sadako is um, fresh off being miserable to play against as well. True. Yeah. She's been miserable. And all of the last three iterations of Sadako have been go nexters, dude. Like people yeah. just go next on her. They don't want to play against her. Everyone on that list, for the, the majority of the top of that list, were go nexters. Guys like Skull Merchant yeah. and fucking Sadako. Sadako Freddy. Freddy. Some fucking dude could have just been like, Freddy Kill Streak Weekend. It was 30 days of data. <laughs> You know what I mean? Frankly, like yeah, people frankly, are yeah. people are people are drawing conclusions off of thirty days of data in a game with 30, 41 survivors and thirty seven killers. Like I don't know the numbers, but you know what I mean. There's like a ton of characters. Yeah. It's it's just noise and it means nothing. People going next, like four mans getting drunk on a Friday night. They got home from work. They had some McDonald's. They fired up the light. They fired up DVD. They're sitting down to play with the homies. They're gonna go next on Freddy because boring Freddy. He's camping. Let's go next. Like, it's just yeah. so much. And Skull Merchant makes it very clear that these numbers are not to be trusted. A 70% kill rate, she's not a strong killer. People just go next because they hate her. Yeah. Right? So it's, they're yeah. not, you're not learning anything from those stats. And that's the problem is, I don't even know why Behavior put them out because then everybody's, now you got people drawing conclusions like, oh, oh, oh God, the game balance. They're taking game balance conclusions from stats that covered 30 days of data over the course of like a holiday. Like a blood hunt, like random. There's so many changes to like people's playing, like play times, and like uh, it's just so dumb. Yeah, they could have done like Ots could have done a fucking Freddy video, and you're gonna see his kill rate go up by ten percent because people are just because people are playing him, and True. players aren't used to going against Freddy. It's like it means nothing. The the stat the stats and the data until we know what people's MMRs are, until we have deep stats, we don't know anything, and no conclusions should be drawn. And the majority of people that are actively talking about drawing conclusions are just clickbaiting people because they want to sound smart. They want to sound like, oh, here it is. There's a specific creator who spent the last fucking week since that numbers came out being like, using those numbers to prove that, that like survivor is impossible. It's so hard. A killer is so easy. And it's just like, so cringe, man. Just, there's, there's no actual data yeah. in there. Just, I kind of get noise. why Behavior hasn't been publishing kill rates lately. This is well, the first time they've done it in a long time. No. You literally see like consistently see the best the best killers in the game have the lowest kill rates. The yeah. objectively best killers. Blight wasn't on that list. Nurse wasn't on that list. West yeah, Nurse was like fifty three percent or something like that. Yeah. And no. Yeah. Doctor was the lowest at fifty one, which I was kinda surprised by. Because I thought it would be nurse, no. frankly. Nurse it's been nurse every time for as long as I can remember. Yeah, Doctor's objectively better than the majority of killers on the list of the highest kill rates. He's objectively better than Skull Merchant, objectively better than Sodico. Right. Like, he's can, he can actually deny things. I like, like Doctor. God. Yeah, Doctor is strong. He's not uh, awesome, but he's strong enough. He's, he's fun to play than, against. Stronger than Sodico. Stronger than Skull Merchant. But that yeah. means nothing. People don't give up against, against Doctor, because he's fun. <laughs> yeah. He's Unless he's, he's playing fine. that that one build, I hate that one build. The oh, skill impossible check. skill check, impossible skill check. I'm just like, ugh. I've been going really? against on on DVD mobile. I've been going against uh, impossible healing doctors where they have like chorophobia. Um, and oh, distress, that shit. distressing. And then God. They have the, they have the, yeah, get a new it's, stick. It's so annoying, bro. It's, <sighs> I hate I hate when you go up against the same. But you're like, okay, I've played. Okay, every time I get a Myers, I'm like, I've played this match. I know what you're doing. I know how yeah. this is gonna go. You're gonna get someone. Oh, it's it's Scratch Mirror. I wonder how quickly he'll pop around the corner after someone goes for the unhook. Scratch Mirror yeah. is the least fun build to play against in DVD. Yeah, it used boring. to be fun when people didn't know what they were doing. I'll drop against Tombstone. Scares. It was fun. Now, yeah. now, now he just sneaks a fucking. He pulls you off a gen, or he sneaks a hook, and then just camps with, with yeah. Scratch Mirror. Yeah. Wow, really fun. Yeah, give yeah, me two but he moonwalked by the doorway on Midwich while you were on hook. Isn't that fun? He's a fun guy. LMAO, yeah. Aren't you having fun Lol. right now? He was moonwalking. LMAO, X LMAO XD. But, aside from that, DBD PTB, two thumbs up. <laughs> I'll do we just we just spent like <laughs> 20 minutes shitting on DBD in general after talking no, 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 how no, great no. the PTB was. That's good. No, good I mean, we that's, were, that's what, that's we were what glowing happened. about the PTB. Glowing. Yeah. This so, is us glowing. Yeah. This is this as was... positive as we get. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, well, let's check in with some other asymmetrical horror games. Um, first of all, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is getting some new skins. Well, Shirtless it's Johnny. Skin. Well, yep. Yeah. Shirtless Johnny and uh, doily dress sissy. <laughs> She's wearing a doily, yeah. <laughs> it does actually look a little bit better in game. I've seen really? some footage. 
It, a little bit of that one image, and Hang I was on. like, "You haven't played it." I no. have played it, and it's incredible. The update was great. The skins incredible. look um, the skins look amazing, and again. For all of you guys, and I know that there's this call. How big is the not, advertisement in the corner? This, this call, time. this call is not a safe space because I'm the only TCSM holdout still. I'm Doug, still the uh, TCM, loving it. The FCC says you TCM. have to say hashtag ad before you start talking about this. I'm not getting paid. <laughs> they they hate me. They haven't given me anything cool. I didn't even get a Christmas card this year. Um, they they were too busy spending time with their families. Doug, sorry, I must have the slipped skins, their minds. The skins are phenomenal and they're free, and they a are bunch free. of people are using them. The new execution mm. packs are really dope. The new weapon packs are really dope. Everything looks great. How much are those, they, by the way, again? Uh, I think the, the both DLCs combined was like twelve ninety nine. I can't remember the actual specifics on how much they were, but I bought them both. Okay. So I think, I think it's six ninety nine and five ninety nine. Were the two? Were the two six ninety nine for the kill packs and five ninety nine for the weapons? Okay. But it's like each 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 uh, family member got multiple kills and each family member got like three or four weapons so it's like it's a lot of stuff and they're really good and it's high quality i really do enjoy it the, the weapons uh, look like they're kind of palette swaps a little bit you get like one new weapon and it's like a palette swap it's like no it's made of ivory no it's made of this no it's made of that but there are the the executions do look like they've done mocap for it right so yeah there's a bug on the leatherface one where he saws their legs to take the legs out one and so it's just completely silent. It's like ASMR kill, like his mm. chainsaw, and no, there's no noise. But the noise is around you, so you hear like the chirping birds and people running by. And like I was doing it last night, and like a cook ran past me. It was like a little little truffle shuffle behind me, like while I was doing it. And I was like, ah, oh, it was tappy tapped. What a peaceful execution. Um, which I'm sure, and then it's a known bug. They're fixing it, but yeah. So again, I think that the DLC was pretty cool. And again, I have seen a lot of people using it. Because a tremendous amount of console players still play the game, and they all buy all the shit forever, so everybody's rocking all the new stuff. Yeah, yeah. You say something about Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Evil yeah. Dead didn't didn't uh, hire a new developer to work on the game, or a new community manager, or a horror icon. That so everybody's. What I hear there is of. Evil Dead didn't have their developers decide they don't want to work on the project anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Sumo's yeah. not working on TCM anymore. So, yeah, well, you guys can talk more about that. And I mean, I think Gary and I are taking opposite camps because I think we, Gary and I, would both agree. I, I, I don't want to be so bold to say. I think we would both agree that kind of a coin flip. It could go either way. It could be a good sign or it could be a bad sign. I will yeah. agree that it could be a bad sign. I'm not going to yeah. fight. And I agree. It could be a good sign. sign. Maybe, maybe going we were like, sign. we could move this in a different direction. We should spend some money, hire a new team to work on this game, so that we can really you know, sort it out. Like, maybe and we should hire some designers. Hope. Some designers mm -hmm. could really help us, actually, because we're shit at it. How about um, some game developers? Yeah, some developers we should, some designers. Sorry, we should clarify very quickly for those of you listening that Gary and Doug are speaking about uh, an announcement by Sumo Digital that said they're no longer working on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but they were working to ensure the handover to Gun would be as smooth as possible. So, so wait, Gun... Doing... No, no, they're, they're handing over to new developers. They haven't announced who it is oh, yet, but they're okay. gonna they're going to be new handing developers. Over it's to new developers. Oh, that would <laughs> I that hope it's that would be it won't be Ilphonic. Nah, if no. it was Ilphonic though, I I bet I'd be really Gary. Oh, if it was Ilphonic, I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm still not gonna play it, but you know, at least it's in good hands. Yeah. I hope oh. so. I thought they were handing over two gun. No, new developers. That's what I'm saying. This is why I mm. they, they made the timeline, they made the timeline statement about like we're gonna we've got content planned through august and then we'll decide what direction we're going in and we all looked at that as like it could be good or it could be bad mostly felt ominous to everybody myself included but when they're doing things like hiring a new community manager when they're doing things like finding a new developer from the game when they're doing things like bringing barbara crampton who is a niche horror icon from reanimator to the game when they're doing these things yeah in February doesn't tell me they're done in August. <laughs> when they were like, Barbara Crampton's coming, I was like, I'm sorry, but who? Yeah. I know, who? I know. Right, and that's going to be most people. I know. Yeah. I agree. And then they did, people did the same thing, and, and John got a little defensive over it, but the same thing with the Nicotero skin. People were like, who the fuck is Greg Nicotero? And John was like, what? John's like, well, actually, and I remember seeing you do a tweet about it being Why like, well, actually, right? he's, he's very, very uh, famous and very... He is, very, he is he's pretty well known. He's well known. He's well known. Which see, I, I, I see it as a red flag that they're handing over to new developers because that's not something you want, really. Because it doesn't seem like to me like Sumo Digital were doing a bad job with the game because all the well, issues with the game are all balanced, which are all, you know, that's all decisions made by Gun. 
So it seems to me people... like maybe maybe Sumo are like, there's not really much in it for us working on this project anymore. We're tired there's of a, this. Th yeah. There's a lot I mean, of people, they, There was a lot of bugs, lot, though. Lot, and there's a lot of bugs that have been in the game since, like, launch. Like, there's there are still issues with, with bugs in the game, and there are, like, I've had, like, I have multiple bugs. I played last night, and I had multiple bugs. I got shoulder checked by Leland, and I can no longer interact with anything on the map. Mm -hmm. um, I had people in chat talking about how the, the being hit off of a ladder is now creating issues where you get bugged inside of the ladder. There's just been, there have been some some persistent yeah. issues with the game in terms of a development standpoint with bugs and stuff. So again, like you said, could be a red flag. It could be Sumo left. It could be gunfire Sumo. And it, like, it, it could, yeah, it could be the Sumo just weren't interested in the project. And yeah. maybe that's why Gun were like, we have to. And maybe Gun is going to pull the, pull the plug in August. And maybe Sumo is like, well, we don't want to work on something temporary. We want to work on something that's going to be a long-term project. Could be or that. maybe, or maybe Sumo is doing a bad job and all these issues that they're having maybe aren't Gun's fault. And maybe Gun's been trying to get shit done. And uh, no, I, I, I definitely believe a lot of the issues that the games had were Gun's fault. I'm pretty sure it was their I'm... PR and their inability to shut the fuck up for a long time, which caused them... Gary, they, 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 they muzzled but anyway, the man I'm just on repeating Twitter, what we've all and they we've... hired a community manager. Oh, they didn't they fire can't... him, so the problem is not... They done. muzzled him. <laughs> no. Maybe he's so... really good at what he does outside of talking on Twitter and Reddit. I did enjoy his tweet. Uh -huh. I'm gonna shut the fuck up now. <laughs> well, no, his tweet, and his tweet was very. His tweet was kind of cunty, and I was like here for I, it. Where he's like, he's like, you can't have fun anymore, you know. Despite the fact that we've had some good stuff, you know, people always. I got canceled. Like, you just can't yeah. make jokes about anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it like, like you that. Can't, you can't be so unprofessional in a professional now. world. Yeah, it but, definitely had that yeah. energy of like it's somebody else's fault that I was terrible on social media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Like, I'm like, come on, man, bro. Like, I love you to death, but come on, man. You gotta chill. It may have just been that their contract was up as well. I mean, it was six or... months after game's release, right? Yeah. yeah. August to February. They've been working so... on it for a couple of years, so... Yeah, like, regardless like to, of I'd, how their performance I, was, it was just I'd, like, I'd like the end of the contract. Yeah. Because I want to see the game succeed and because I enjoy the game, because I'm a very big Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan, and I have been enjoying making content in the game, I really hope that Gun Media parted ways because they want to go further and better. And not Sumo said, we're out, you guys are trash, and we don't want to work with you anymore. Like, like we won't ever really know, I don't think. But I think the what happens for the next few months is going to be kind of telling. I hope the game dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I love about, and you know what I love yeah. about Gary? I love that Gary is, is open and honest about that. He yeah. doesn't pretend that he doesn't want the game to die. He just says it with his whole chest. He hates yeah. the game. He hates the developers and he wants them all to just fail. I hope Sumo Digital will go on to better things and I think art. Gun need to really look in the mirror and think about how they handled this. They need to stand, yeah. stand in time out. Yeah. Yeah. Go to bed without supper. They were the, they were the chosen one. They threw it away. They did, yeah. I yeah, just, like... They may... Just, if we could go back and watch how excited we all were oh, yeah. for this game. I know. I just, pants if, play. I could, if, I, if I could play Devil's Advocate... Right, I feel like the VHS had a very similar arc that they never recovered from. They just came out and were stupid and sucked, and then continued to stupid and suck until they died. And I just want to give Gun the benefit of the doubt that yes, they've made mistakes, yes, they had issues, but they're correcting it and they're going to move forward in a better and more healthy way. That's I just think I it's too little, too late. I think it they they, they had be. maximum height uh, hype last fall, and they didn't capitalize on it, and that's a no. game killing mistake. We've it seen time be. and time again. VHS was a bad be. game as well. It was not it, a bad game, and I will no, no, v, VHS better. was a better, better game. Oh, I thought you said it was a bad game. I was no, VHS was a fucking mine. Oh, <laughs> Gary, don't do that to me, bro. You're right. VHS was, VHS was an infinitely better game, yeah. design wise. It was. It, uh, what's dead mm. because they didn't correct their mistakes. They didn't fire mm. their Mister Marshmallows. They didn't get a new community. I'm sorry. Manager. What was that? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say uh, that. They didn't fix Matt, their problems. Um, they just kept <laughs> writing their problems until they died. And it, I like to think that Gun is fixing their problems. That's what I want to be glass half full. We'll wrap up our asymmetrical horror segment because we have a lot of book club stuff to get to. Oh, we're talking yeah. about Killers, Killer Clowns from Outer Space has a new trailer, just came out, and a release date June, June 2024. 4th? Is it June 4th? June, yeah, June 4th, 2024. Right. Yep. Yep. So um, you can pre-order it now. Uh, it seems like it's well underway. It's it's coming out in just a few months. Who's yep, who's you, hyped? 
I'm hyped. I pre-ordered the deluxe edition to get the free hot dog skins. I'm pretty stoked. Do you remember when, you remember when we were really excited about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hyped that? back then. I'm, that's when I was hyped about yeah. Killer Clowns, which was about a year ago, maybe? Maybe a year and a half? I don't know, a long time yeah, ago now. They like, fumbled a little bit. And my, but remember, Gary, they did, they did the handoff to the Golden Child of the Elphonic. horror genre, Elphonic. They are good. And, and I it will say, one of the... One thing that I keep hearing, um, and I don't know if you guys will agree with this, but this is what I keep hearing from people in the scene, is that it looks as if the trailer, the gameplay trailer we got now for the June 4th release has taken a step back in terms of like graphical quality and optimization. Like it looks kind of looks worse than the original gameplay trailers. I did that notice the frame rate was kind of questionable, and I didn't know if that was just like the video that was taken or what. I would suggest maybe it's just it's a less of a uh, refined trailer in terms of if this is probably more actual gameplay rather than something that's been like sharpened mm. up and edited. Right, something that cleaned up you for know, a like when you see right? like a, a trailer during E3 or something, it just looks beautiful. Cyberpunk. They, mm. Yeah, they've got it. They've got it on like the most high performing thing. They've gone through it. They've added extra details and stuff to it that what that aren't going to be in the actual game. So it could be that situation. Now we're actually seeing what the game's going to look like. Um, so I don't really, I don't, I didn't look, I didn't think it looked bad. Yeah. I think it's going to be like fun. a fun for like a month or two game, which isn't terrible because I'm looking oh, yeah. forward to that month or two oh, yeah. and being able to play with you guys. I think it's going to be a really good time, but I'm not thinking it's going to be, you know, we'll be sitting there talking about it in two years' time. So, what's the latest update for Killer Clowns? Like, it's the hot, you know, See, I, I thing. Would, if it lasted two months, I think that'd be impressive. Like, I think it would be about a week or two before the player base tends to ruin it. Um, right. It will probably have a mid midnight, midnight ghost hunt kind of vibe to it. I think it'll be yeah. really fun for a bit, and then people will figure out um, meta. You know what ASIN players are like? Right. Kill it with fire. Um, okay, so here's here's my prediction. I agree with you, because here's my prediction. I, here's my prediction. We've got Ghostbusters Part 2 on our hands. It'll be really, really fun for a few weeks. Everybody will be really into it. The game will not have it doesn't I mean I don't unless they've changed anything from with that Ilphonic handover, they're not gonna have um roll queues. So you can't queue up as clown or queue up as survivor. You just queue up and get thrown oh, in. Yeah. Similar to the Ghostbusters. That's when I, no, I was like I yeah. no, Ghost, Ghostbusters launched with that system and then they refined it down <laughs> to where you can prefer a role and it's pretty easy to get your preferred role, but you'll still occasionally have to play. But I will say, I, I play with my girlfriend sometimes on Ghostbusters, and randomly one of us will get chosen as Ghost. And it is kind of annoying, because you're like, you want to play with your, your right. partner, you want to play with your friend, and now we're reversing each other, which is not what we want to do. Now you got Killer Clowns, it's going to be, what is it, 3v7? Was it yeah, 3v7. So you got 3v7, you got groups of friends that are going to queue up, and they're going to be thrown on whatever mm -hmm. random teams. I don't think that's going to have good longevity. People are going to want to play with their friends. They're going to dodge if they don't get with their friends on the right team. They're going to dodge yeah. if they don't get the roll. They're going to rage quit. They're going to do all these things. I just think it's going to be like a, a party game. It looks like a chaotic, unbalanced mess to me, which I think is going to be really good for the genre. I think it'll stick around because it's owned by Ilphonic and it's going to have console crossplay. So like every Ilphonic owned console crossplay game, Predator Hunting Grounds, Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed, it'll have enough of a player base to survive, but I don't think it's going to be like you guys said. I don't think it'll be a we won't be talking about it weekly on the podcast. It'll be like Ghostbusters. Once in a while, we'll pop up and talk about an update or a dev stream, and then it'll go back to nobody talking about it or playing it regularly. That's my yeah. prediction. I'm just going to enjoy the first week that it's out. I'm going to play as yep. much as I can. And then as soon as I start to like sniff and detect that the, the meta stranglehold is happening, I'll probably give it a break. Yeah. And then yep. just kind of see secondhand how it turns out. Yeah, that's my. I have high hopes for it to for it to <clears throat> last more than a few weeks, but I don't expect. It. Yeah, I want it to, but I don't expect. It. If it lasts more than two weeks, I think that's a giant W for it. Yeah, I mean, I wish it. I wish it the best. I, oh, I've been, I love the original movie, and I'm, ever since they announced it, I was like, I can't believe this exists, and I really want it to succeed. But yeah, at this point, just kind of tempering expectations to protect myself. We 33 have seconds ago, they uploaded a video of one of the clowns uppercutting some sort of like high school jock, and then he just ragdolls and falls over hilariously. So, 
Um, I will say the, the game looks a little Friday the Thirteenth as well. It looks. A bit I stupid. thought that at first. It does. I was like, yeah. It has a Friday the Thirteenth vibe, which Agreed. again, yeah. fun for like a month or so. Gasp. Um, we have one more thing to talk about, and we didn't put it on our list, but we have to talk <gasps> about it at least. At least start talking about it. I'm not talking about Puppet um, Master. No, we're not talking about Puppet Master yet. We will though. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, level zero extraction. Have you guys heard of it? I no. played it. What? I was in like an early alpha test for them. Really? Level zero. Well, have you heard about? Have you heard about the new? They've like completely shifted their direction now, and they're going to make it an asymmetrical extraction game, similar to Hunt Showdown. But like, you go in to harvest resources, and then people, humans, play as the monsters trying to stop you. You heard about that? Well, I mean, that was always the was way that, it was. Was that how was that how it was? Because I've been told that it was changed from from the early. No, somebody like... somebody was the monster, and then there was the humans. Oh, I didn't. It was know it was, was always an asim game when I played it. Um, so it's basically very much like imagine Alien, but an asim. So the the monsters like crawl through vents and stuff, and you're in this kind of like cave like environment where part of it's like kind of more like a lab, part of it's more kind of like mushroomy cave part. It has like three sectors and you have to like go to each of the different sectors and like open up doors to get like it was some sort of resource to escape, but uh, the monster's trying to stop you. I actually thought it was quite good. Um, It does have a little bit of that kind of lower, like mid-sized team horror game vibe about it. Do you know what I mean? Where the UI sometimes is a little idiosyncratic. You can tell it's not mm. like huge budget. But I actually thought it was quite good. The atmosphere was pretty cool about it. Um, and the developers were very open to feedback. So one person in the call, actually, we were talking with the developers, was like, I think one of the best ways, they were saying it's kind of confusing to tell if you're in sector A, B, or C, if you're like a survivor, so to speak, or whatever. And one person in the call suggested like you could make them have like lights on the walls that are color coded. So it's like sector A is always red, sector B is always blue. And they were like, that's a great suggestion. And immediately they were like writing it down, taking all this feedback. Um, so that was really cool to hear. Like the developers seem to be very earnest about taking this places. And I've been quietly kind of wanting to play that when it comes out. Because like I said, have you, Alien have you signed, as an asymmetrical game, basically. Have you signed up for the closed beta? It's open on Steam now. Uh, I think it's, I did. Um, maybe I need to go recheck. But yeah, I would be interested in playing it some more because yeah, the I sound was really cool. Good. There was a lot of like, sound cues for like if the monster was getting near you. It had a lot of like tension. So I, I thought it was actually quite fun. Yeah. I hadn't heard if, anything If we can put that into our group chat to remind me to download, like to sign up to the beta. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just put it in. I literally oh, just perfect. put it in there. Perfect. So Thank you. You're all set. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I want to uh, have to check Anything that out for you, for sure. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So, sign up. I think I got ex invited to the playtest for that because of my partner manager at Twitch, who was recently laid off. So. Uh, oh. Yeah. Same. Yeah. It really sucks because yeah, with the same partner manager. Fantastic. Uh, it's oh, and now oh. I think. And now I well, think Sonona and I don't have anybody. <laughs> yeah, I think we just don't I have would one say, yeah. I would say, though, um, Twitch has been doing such a great job lately that it makes sense that they got rid of half of their staff because they've just been killing it, right? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, definitely. So I'm very frustrated with Twitch right now, but we can talk about that another time. <laughs> oh. Maybe after. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, before we <laughs> so don't do the gloom, should we like book club stuff or something? Yeah. Can, can we talk about Alan Wake two? Yeah, let's start off with the, uh... the, the, the day after the podcast. I just played it all of Saturday. That was my entire day. I finished it. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about Alan Wake two. Kind of wrap that up a bit, um, because Gary and Sino have both beaten it, so we can talk full spoilers now. Yeah, because Doug excited. doesn't care. It's not that I don't care. Um, I guess maybe it is. <laughs> I, I mean, because like, no, because I enjoyed the game. It was fun. And I do want to revisit it. But it's like one of those things where like I want to revisit it. But then I almost do anything else. Like I've just been playing Texas Chainsaw, DVD, DVD Mobile, then Identity V and watching hockey games. Like it's anything but playing Alan Wake. But like. I do. I I see the value in the game. I thought it was a lot of fun, but I just think that for me, it's like the dopamine release isn't as is, is there as you know other things. Hmm. It's, it's very story driven, very single player, very. You know, it's cool. I think watching gameplays, I might become more of a let's play guy than a play the game guy when it comes to single player games like Alan Wake, just because like I don't know. You watched John play? I did. I did. I did a I full watched, I watched, I watched a little of it. 
Um, and I, I had to Doug, watch Doug, do your... you watch on like two times speed? Yeah, I watch one and a half. How did you know? I just, I... <sighs> It's just the neurodivergent way, you know? One half is fine. Two is like a little disrespectful, I think. It's too much. Well, I don't (laughs) like the way John... I'd be a little... I don't like the way way John's voice sounds on two, but 1.5, it sounds fine. Sounds reasonable. People told me that I sound like Ben Shapiro on 2x speed, and I'm like, okay, well, first of all... I'm going to have to see that. (laughs) First of all, I don't like hearing that. But second of all, what are you watching me at 2x speed for? I only tried it once just to see what it was like, and I didn't like it. When I watch things on 2x speed, I can't even tell what someone's saying. That's what I'm like saying. I, can't, mm. I can't keep up with it either. So. Yeah, I, I, I watch my own stuff at 1.5 when I'm checking my my editor's work to make sure that the video is fine. And 1.5 is like basically we're just a bit faster, but two times speed is when it starts to be a bit yeah. chipmunkish. You, you know, you, have you seen that clip of that person that like pretends they can read books really quick and they just kind of flick through it and they pretend they've absorbed all the words? Yep. Have you seen that yeah. Clip? yeah, that's two I've times never met speed. Like YouTube, that. Isn't it? <laughs> 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 they met oh, yeah, people that yeah. bragged about how fast they can read books. How sad. Yeah. What a pathetic fucking thing to brag what about. What a pathetic fucking loser. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Gary. Um, oh, with Adam Wake. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah whatever I, we were talking about. Yeah, whatever. Um, I, I love the game. Like, I have such a high opinion of it now. Like, and don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect game by any means. Like, I still, I don't really love the combat particularly. I think that's probably one of the weakest spots of it. I think, Doug, you shit talked the mind place thing. It just it felt well redundant. Done. It felt like a thing that they just threw in there to give you something to have to do that didn't really accomplish anything for me. Like See, I feel like I could have I could have just clicked on the stuff and it put it on the board for me, but having to figure out where to put it on the board seemed like an unnecessary. So, sometimes step. it was like a I'll try and error this. I don't really care yeah. about figuring exactly. it out. Exactly. Like, I think yeah, though that was a little weak, but like generally I just the other day they announced, um, the guy who owns Remedy or like runs it, um, said how they've sold 1.3 million copies of Alan Wake 2. That's crazy. Which is That's their awesome. best-selling game. That's They haven't amazing. made a profit. They haven't made yeah. any profit yet. Um, and that is because they put so much money and passion into like the songs, like the production, the the FMV stuff. Like, it's, yeah. Because it's all beautifully crafted well, which i i now have mm. even more respect for them because it already feels like it does some really creative interesting things which is usually something that only indie companies do because you know triple a titles tend to have to make their profit um so the fact that they've done that and they've clearly like not done it for profit because they haven't made one yet um i find quite inspiring <laughs> They will make a profit though, because I mean we're just a couple months out from the release date, so it yes, it yeah. will happen. But it is, yeah, that's that's crazy that they haven't turned it yet. Yeah, and damn. But yeah, I I've been listening to the soundtrack pretty nonstop. It's all over my stream playlist as well now because I just love it. Um, okay, so you've so you finished it. So I'm guessing that you not only liked the uh, Herald of Darkness song, but the uh, the one that plays on the beach as well. Yes, that that bit was. So enjoyable, but like it was a bit messy. But it was so it was, the yeah. music just when I saw them, like the actors, like the, the yeah. musicians, all on the on the sky in the FMV yeah. style. I just I was so happy with it. How about yeah. you? Sam? How did you feel about that side of stuff? I had a little bit of an issue with the final beach segment because I was having really bad inventory problems, and I no. had I accidentally started the sequence, and I was like, "There's no fucking shoebox here." And then I discovered the shoe box, oh, but they were all like, Saga, on your left! And I'm like trying to like get the crossbow and get the bolts and then have some health come out. But right. then they're all thrown projectiles. So it was a little hard for me to take in the majesty of watching the old gods of Asgard put on what could be one final great show sort of thing. But it was cool. I, I still had a good time, but I was like, wow, I really fucked this up. Because half the time I'm like trying to get like flashbangs in my pockets and stuff and then run away. But yeah. um, I like I said to you guys last time, I think the... the ch- decision to weave in fmv and have it like the characters are attached to actors who yes. are basically the person playing that role just like really yeah. was very masterfully done it mm. didn't feel like awkward i mean maybe it was like silly at times which was great as well i love the the personality it gives the game watching them do the musical number but i think it just was expertly done and it wasn't too like hello i'm now i'm alan wake even though Alan yeah. Wake's usually like a character in a video game, like it just felt very natural. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't somebody that I looked at and I was like, "That's not Alan Wake." Yeah, no, that's just some guy. 
Yeah, a guy fuck? with a weird wig on or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that work? Can I can I go back to the beach bit just for one last? Mm. I really appreciate it. You know when they're driving the van to the beach. Yes. Oh yeah. The fact yeah. that you can see the van driving around. You can hear like, it. I you just was. It, yeah. I wasn't expecting to see it, and when I did, I was like, "That's so well done." Mm-hmm. It's so beautifully timed and paced, and just everything right. about the descent down to the beach. I thought was like that. Mm-hmm. I, that would be the thing. I think everything about the game is interactive, but also very cinematic. It's really yes. well crafted. It's very well paced and like yeah, designed to a T. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I love Saga. I didn't. Yes. Like, I just she's like one like I bought her skin in DVD. She's like I'm gonna like she's I like her more than Alan. Alan's great, but Saga's fantastic. One of my favorite protagonists that I've played yeah. in recent history. I think she's fantastic. I really I enjoyed honestly, seeing. Like... Sorry, go ahead. I really enjoyed seeing the final segments with the the board, and mm-hmm. it's like it's very horror, and it's like there's the photo oh, of Logan, yeah. and you keep putting up the photos of Logan, and it keeps yeah. getting dimmer, and it's like you abandoned her. You're a terrible mother. Yeah, the like the psychological horror cabin sequence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was good. cool. Yeah, I, I I like Saga a lot. Not to sound like one of those like you know up yours woke moralist people, but I was kind of expecting to walk in and be like Saga, eh, bring back Alan Wake. And by the end of the game, I was just like, I kind of like playing a Saga more actually. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think all of her like a character. Al- Al- Alan's were like more set pieces. I felt whereas Saga's felt like the main meat and veg of the gang because you could yeah. like, you know. You could go around and do the rhymes, which I thought were weird. I quite weirdly enjoyed them, but the little riddle rhyme things. Yeah. Um, I really liked finding the lunch boxes. Like I spent a lot of my time finding all of those. Um, I will say about the rhymes, and I hope they fix this at some point. As much as I like the charms and like it's a nice little bonus thing, they take up so much space in your inventory. They do. And a lot of them are just like the mug charms or whatever, where it just gives you like an extra life, I think. I, I burnt all of those. I like, yeah. I, went, well, I remember being at the police station at that point and I was like, I'm just going to use all these up. Yeah. I kind of regret it because the beach part was hard. I wish I kind of like kept at least one for the beach part. Right, yeah. I think the only, the only thing from a narrative perspective that I was like, I didn't mind it. It's just like, I figured out the scratch twist. Mm-hmm. Pretty early on. That's what I was going to ask. Was what were your reactions to the scratch um, reveal? I was like, yeah, hmm. I know. <laughs> That's the only so my cool they did it, even if because yeah. I, I kind of guessed it too. But um, I thought the reveal was really well done. Mm. He just fucking Could... kills somebody as soon as he shows up. Right. Yeah. It, well, I figured the whole point of scratch was that it was supposed to be like persona. Where it's like mm. Scratch is supposed to be a representation of Alan having, like, for example, anger issues and things like that. Because Alice mentions that she talks about Alan being angry a lot. Um, and I feel like, actually, I feel a lot of empathy for Alice because Alice is basically she's not like Saga. Saga gets to become the hero and she begins to like co-write the story. Alice basically is supposedly somebody who kills herself because of being haunted by Alan Wake and his legacy. So she's mm-hmm. like very doomed and very like sidelined, but I kind of like the idea that like she ultimately is the one that leads Saga to being able to get the bullet the like the yeah. bullet of light. So she ultimately plays a very pivotal role, but it's she's a very tragic character because it feels like she's basically doomed to live in the writer's shadow and they kind of talk about how Alan even Alan says this himself he's like egocentric idea of like the perfect piece of work and how that has like consumed other people not just him so like alice has basically suffered because alan is so Mm -hmm. in his own head about being this like amazing writer and having this amazing magnum opus and it's just like poor alice basically just has a shit life and ends up in the dark place (laughs) it's like i felt really bad for Mm -hmm. her but her stuff is very haunting to watch like her 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 segments were really she the actor did a great job Yeah. yeah she did yeah, and I, I think uh, what they've set up is we're going to get to see a bit more of her coming up, right? Because mm. that whole revelation at the end. What do y'all think of the ending? Like, the very end. I, I, because, like, I, I haven't played Alan Wake 1, so, but I, I got goosebumps, because I was just, so, yeah. I'm so into it, I'm so invested, I really liked Alan Wake 2. Um, yeah. So I, I'm very excited for whatever comes, like, there's, like, a new game plus mode, right? Yep. Yes, the final draft. I haven't played that yet. Is there 
more to it if I play it. Because I, I want to, but I know they're making DLC, right? So I'm like, I might just wait right. till that comes out, but so from what if I've there's heard... more stuff, I kind of want to see it. Mm -hmm. So from what I've heard, it's basically the same game, but there's a different ending. It's like the true ending, so... There's some yeah, parts here and there that reference myself. things yeah, that you it's like a need to play slightly before. different. Yeah. Because I think what I might do is I might play Control at some point. Because mm, I, mm -hmm. I know that's in the same universe. I kind of get where it's going to fit in now with the, the agency that comes to get Scratch. I'm guessing that that's the agency. Yes. Probably, yeah. So I, I kind of want to yeah. play that in case they, they come into more of the DLC at some point, because I'm intrigued by all that. Um, so I might play Control and then maybe come back to Alan Wake 2, hoping the DLC's out by then. That sounds like a good plan. Oh, yeah. I need to ask, what's the name of the lady that works for the FBC? Oh. Um, the Casey one... becomes pals with her for a little bit inside the police yeah. station. The one that you have to talk to to wrap up Saga's story of like, we're gonna go down to the beach yeah. now. I can't she's remember She's got a name. really animated face and she's always like, yeah. You could yeah. do that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was. Yeah. I wanted to know if you guys thought you if you liked her or if you thought she was kind of an asshole. I think when I first met her, I was kind of like, okay, shut up. Yeah, you because know, like when you first meet her, she's like in that closet at the police station, and she's like, we got overrun. And then you look around, and you're like, there's only like two of them. You suck. That's how I was anyway. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. But, like uh, but by the end of it, I was like, like I thought I thought she was cool. Oh, yeah, I liked her. her. I think I think when yeah. I first when you meet her, she's she's like boss ass, fires you basically, tells you to go home. And I was like, oh fuck you, right? And then, yeah. and then very quickly she gets humbled, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll sort this shit out for you. Yeah, there's like there's like two of the fucking zombie things or shadows yeah, take, taken. Yeah, and the and the police station. I'm like, you couldn't have handled this. I will say, Seriously? I love the water ones, the water takens that are like oh, where they're, they're like, like upside reflections down. of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, Those, the tough ones. I thought they were really creative. I just Those are cool. Yeah, They're like a Silent Hill monster, honestly. Yeah. They were really cool. As soon as I saw one, I was like, because I think the first one you see one is in the retirement home. Mm -hmm. It's like a bit yeah. of a mini boss. And I was like, this thing looks sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I I wouldn't mind one or two more enemy types. Um, because basically Same. it's like Normal guys, guys that zoom around and throw things at you repeatedly that are annoying as fuck, and then the swimming mm. ones, which are really cool. Um, there's some bigger lads. And there's like some wolves, I guess. But there's, there's some big lads as well. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind a little more variety, but it was it was pretty cool overall. I mean, the combat is quite good, but it's not like amazing. But I think it does the job well and it doesn't get like too frustrating unless you're Doug, maybe. <laughs> where you were plugging bullets everywhere and running out of ammo dead quickly but I, I would quite happily take that over a game that like sometimes those survival horror games of the past if they're too combat based like Silent Hill 3 it starts to feel like a slog you're like yeah. there's too much of this and the enemies can be quite annoying to fight so um, I thought it was still pretty fun overall even though it was very much like shine flashlight then shoot it which is exactly what Alan Wake 1 is but Alan Wake 1 has too much of that so it gets like it tedious does. Yes, I remember by the time you get to the power plant in Alan, Alan Wake 1, and it's just like one giant long fight there, I was just like, mm. oh my god, make it stop, make it yeah. end. Like, you're overstaying your welcome now. But I think they did a much better job balancing it in this one. Yeah. I think one thing I will say about the ending of Alan Wake is it's quite long. When I was playing, mm. I was like, okay, I'll finish this chapter and I can go to bed, like, I'm, I'm right at the end. And then it would it'd always be like, another bit to do, and I was like... Ugh. I want to go to bed now. I've been playing this all day. How long is this going to keep going? Alan Wake 1 or 2? 2. I haven't played 1. I didn't think it was too long, but I think it's because when it told me oh, you're about to enter the final bit, I like didn't play for two days. But I think if oh, you okay. were like, yeah. I'm just going to do I, a little I, bit more, and it's like, oh, now I'm playing as Alan again. Shit. Okay, now I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Because I, I, I played it all day. I got to that bit. I was like, right, let me go get the last of the lunchboxes that I've missed. Let me go find those. And then, then I was, went back to end it, and it was like, I don't know, nine, ten o'clock, and I was like playing it to, like midnight or something, and like, it was just like, oh my god, yeah, it was great though. Like I love, mm -hmm. I, I say, I yeah. love the game. I think it's fantastic. I think everyone should check it out. That I love that. There, there's so there's so many like wow moments in the game. Like obviously, Herald of Darkness was a highlight. Um, Scratches reveal, you know, like I said, even though I kind of suspected it, it was still I like how they did it. He ju it just it's funny happens. if he just sh if, if he just shut up for like twenty seconds longer, he'd have won. Yeah. 
If I he know. just not murdered someone in that split second, you know what? Yeah, oh, he kills poor Ilmo or Yako. Yeah. Which one? He kills Yako. Yeah, I think he kills Yako. Did yeah. you did you see the Ilmo and Yako um advertisement in the cafe? In the cafe? Yeah. Where where it's where only got, one of them. Yeah, and he keeps looking at the blank spot. I didn't oh. see that. No. Oh, it's, it's so, so sad. Breaking. It's it's when you it's when you go to the book signing in yeah. the okay. in the alternate universe um town. When it's like the deer fest is going on yeah, and people deer, are like, yeah. Yeah. Fest, if you go into the if you go into the cafe during deer fest, it, it plays and it's just oh, no. Elmo and there's like a shadow where his brother normally is. And they cut to him, and nothing happens. Oh yeah. no! And it then keeps they keep turning, like to... trying to ask him questions. It's heartbreaking. That's I don't know so if I can sad. handle it. Because all the other ones are so funny. Yeah, yeah. That's the only know. sad one. Oh, they were but, so yeah. good. Yeah, those were like some of my favorite. I, I got all six of them. I was like, I gotta watch every single one of these. Um, yeah, weird characters because, like, at the beginning, they're like kind of they tell you info, and then they're kind of jokey on the TV. And then they're revealed to be the heads of the cult. So you're like, oh, so like they were turned bad or they were always bad. And then eventually you find out that the cult was basically their way of finding out who the Taken are and getting rid of them. So they were mm. always good guys, which I yeah. thought was kind of cool. Like, they really played with you because at one point I was like, it's really weird to think of them as bad guys when half the time they're like, look at me, I'm drinking wine like an asshole. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I love these guys. And it's like, you oh, but they're coffee. evil. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, lo I love them, but uh, yeah, they're like there's so many like awesome moments like that, and I think for me, the moment at the end when you find out that the bullet of light that hits Alan is like that's the first frame of the game. And you make that connection. Mm. I thought that was really cool too. Yeah, it's yeah. just like this is how the game started, but <sighs> but I didn't have any context not a loop. for it then. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's a, a spiral, spiral. Yeah, and yeah. I love yeah. that. I love yeah, that framing. Because the spiral is yeah. almost the same, but it is going somewhere. So it makes a lot of sense that it would repeat, but change every time. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, yeah. there's a it, lot it, of it these... just clicks everything you've done in the game. Every loop you've gone through, it has been a spiral. You know, it just all makes sense. Yeah. And it's all the doors. Good, I kept thinking, like, what's that symbol meant to represent? I know, mm, in yes. the nursing home, I, mm -hmm. uh, like, you try to go in it, and then the, the janitor guy's like, you don't want to go in there, <laughs> or no. whatever. And I was like, Really? Because I kind of do. Seeing, I kind of do. I promise I do. But it makes sense that they saved it for the end. Yeah. yeah excellent. Excellent game. Yeah. Well, I was remedy. very happy with it. Well, cool. Excellent choice of book club as well. Thank you. Oh, I was thinking about this. So, um, what do you guys think about like after every round, like after all four of us pick a game, we do a quick tier list where we rank the games that we've played. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and we can kind of keep up with it as time goes, so we can look back and be like, "We really love these games. We really love these games." Or I don't know. Do you want to do one was a shit one? <laughs> this one kind of fucking sucked. <laughs> do you want to do tier list or out of ten? Oh, um, maybe we should do like out of ten. Out of ten, I like out of ten. Yeah, that might be better because it is maybe a little apples to oranges sometimes with them for like That's a true. tier list but um we could but both are are fine though but yeah yeah <laughs> somebody picks one that people don't like then we can how do we do it do it. we do do we do an aggregate like do we just pick do we, we just average scrum debate we, av we average our like, scores because yeah, like because doug's gonna bring down Alan wake a big chunk <laughs> and then probably the chillers are guys are about to go um out. here's the thing about me though <clears throat> is that i don't i don't give a shit when it comes to games, I don't have main character syndrome. I don't think that like games are I don't think that I'm the right one and you guys are the wrong ones in terms of like how games are like I listened to you guys talk about Alan Wake just now and I was like like I kinda like chuckling to myself internally. I was like, they could be making all this shit up and I would have no idea. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. They're, just, they're talking about spirals and bullets of lights and shit, and I was like, fuck this wolf. I'm never playing this game again. And I just quit, right? <laughs> <clears throat> and so but I'm not normal. I'm not like your average gamer either. So, and I can see the value. I can see, again, I, I got invested in characters early. I only played for a few hours, but I did get invested in characters. I did see that it had a good story. I will go back and probably watch John's playthrough of it, um, you know, and just kind of like figure out what happens in the story just so I can have the context. Um, so I'm not, I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to come out here and you guys have a game that you're talking about is like, one of the best games, Gary. Gary, you put it on your like your top fifty or top twenty games ever. Or something uh, I'd have like to think about it. Yeah, but it'd be. But quite I'm high saying, up. like, I will buy every remedy game from now yeah. on. 
and yeah. you know, you, you guys are talking about this game like it was a, it was a, it was a good, it was a great game, right? I'm not gonna see you be like one star. I died to the wolf and I hated it. Like I'm not, a, I'm not a YouTube commenter. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. I died to the wolf and I hated it. I'm the main character. Right. And this wasn't fun for me specifically, so it sucks. Like no, I see the value, and mm. I will rate it accordingly. Um, I'm, I probably won't rate it as highly as you guys did because I didn't feel compelled to play forty hours of it. But mm. I won't, I won't give it a one out of ten. Because okay. I suck at it. I'm looking I'll forward to thinking about my number now. I have, to have a little, I gotta a think little of my, thought into that. I gotta think of my number too. Yeah. Well, um, with that said, we should we should probably move on to the uh, the four Chilla's art games that we have to discuss. Yay! Yay! Uh, Yay! Should we start <laughs> with Yay. the closing shift, maybe? Yeah. Well, well that was the only that. one that I fully completed, so that's probably a good one to talk about for sure. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to go first, Doug? <laughs> remember, remember telling yeah. Doug that if he only gets one of the games done, it should be parasocial, and he played the closing shift. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, that's true. I remember that being said. Be defiant. I'll finish parasocial. I'll do parasocial. I'll play it. You tonight, won't. You won't. But you it's bet? fine. You want to bet? Tell bet us me. about closing shift. Closing <laughs> shift was okay. I played closing shift and I played Jisatsu. That I'll give you the context. So when I talk about. Chill art games, that's my experience completely, is I have played Closing Shift Ninja Sasu. Um, I felt like it was not for me. It was unnecessarily cumbersome. What, what is um, the Closing Shift about? Closing Shift is about uh, a character oh who... Oh my god. It's <laughs> like a book <laughs> report where you're you testing the kids. Me? You don't believe me? All right. Oh, no, it's just I, the way Gary asked that, like, you work, what is it? You work? Um, yeah, 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 like I, a, just, yeah. I just felt like it's we should probably talk about the game, what it is before... It's about a girl. Works, a it's girl about works a, a guy who's shop. working and he's doing the closing shift. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll say I'm the expert. I played it. Oh, okay. A girl works well at a done. coffee shop. She works at a coffee shop. She's getting over the course of days. You find out that she's being stalked by somebody. Um, it's she lives in a very small apartment. She goes to work every day. Wow. You have to go through the mundane tasks of going downstairs and getting in your car and going to the place and unlocking and putting away your phone and getting out your you talk to your senpai who's your boss and they make fun of you and talk shit about you constantly. And then you go make coffees that are unnecessarily and unreasonably complicated to get figured out at first to the point that I had to pull up a John Wolf's playthrough to figure out how to finish my first ever coffee. Cause I forgot about having to put lids on. There was a period of time when I forgot about having to use cold and hot cups. I had a very hard time with my first steam milk experience. It was just for me for a himbo oh. who plays ASIM games. It was not, it was, are you bad at games? Not multiplayer ones. Maybe just, some. Are, like, do you commonly struggle with games that aren't like? Uh, can I be honest about something with me? Can you recommend games? Cuphead have, at some point? <laughs> I haven't played. I haven't consistently played single player games since before I started streaming. Like, I I used to play single player games a lot, and then I'd say like somewhere in the twenty, like the World of Warcraft late stages of World of Warcraft, like the 2012, 2013 when I got really into arenas and then I started playing a lot of online multiplayer games, played Overwatch when it came out a lot. I played a lot of Hearthstone, a lot of Heroes of the Storm. I played a lot. I, I, I just, I haven't really done story driven single player games consistently since like the internet became popular. Like when I was a kid, you guys will notice this trend. I talk about how many Resident Evil games I played. I played Resident Evil one, two and three, like at launch on the PlayStation, the original PlayStation. Those, that's when I played those. I played Final Fantasy seven. I played those games, right? Because when I was a child, they didn't have Overwatch and they didn't have World of Warcraft arenas. They didn't have these like large scale multiplayer games, which are what I actually enjoy playing, right? Esports type types of games or like what I'm more, I get more excited about online multiplayer games. And so as I got into content creation, I, my original content creation game was Heroes of the Storm, MOBA. And then I transitioned to Dead by, or to Final Friday the 13th, ASIM, Dead by Daylight, ASIM. And since you guys have known me, the games that I've gotten really excited about and played, we played Overwatch together off stream, right? We play Hunt Showdown together. We play, I got really into Pokemon Unite for a while. These are all multiplayer games. Like when I really follow my heart and my soul and do what I want to do, it's always going to be a multiplayer game. I'll sit and look at my Steam library. I have so many single player games on my Steam library. I'll sit and stare at this list of games that want, got 10, 10 out of 10s and they got game of the year editions and I just load up Home Sweet Home Online and have the fucking best time of my life playing that game. You know, it's, that's just me as a gamer. So yeah, I think I am bad at single player games because I don't play them. 
I don't have a lot of experience. So again, I, I get into this game and I feel completely lost. I feel completely like, okay, what do I do now? I had to keep running back and checking the ingredients because I would order coffees well, and I come back and try to figure I'll, out. I'll, it I'll me, say when it, comes to the co- when it comes to the coffee making in the game, like it, it it's, it's quite complicated. I, was I, having, I didn't. I didn't have an easy time doing it either. Yeah, right. Because right. I remember on stream being stuck for like a long time. Chat we were having a good old laugh at how oh, yeah, confused yeah. I was. The the comments love to be like, "John's really struggling with this," and <laughs> you could I tell it's never been like, a barista. One, yeah, I think I only had one like order that was sent back because I got it wrong. I got all mm. the rest right, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I got- it's kind of confusing. And I got hard stuck in another place. So there was the part where you had to clean the whole store out, right? And yeah. for the long, I was, it was like, you need to inventory the items that are left. It was like the sandwiches. It took me an unreasonable amount of time to figure out that I needed to use the little scan gun that I picked up in the office to actually inventory those items. Like it took me so long to figure that out. Just little stuff like that isn't yeah. intuitive. And so it's like, I'm at this crossroads now where I'm like, do I start playing more single player games? Cause I will get better. I will improve at it if I do it. It's like anything, right? Any hobby, you'll improve it as you do it. But because like right now, I, I just feel lost. It's tricky though, because you're understimulated, maybe because you're so used to these online games where it's like, go, 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 go. Oh my God, you're playing no. with someone. And you can do that with friends. Whereas sometimes these single player games, if you don't pay attention while you're playing it, it's really easy to just be like, what does it want from me? And then you're just like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, yep. You may. But- if you have a little bit more time to do it. Because when did you play the closing shift? Okay. Yeah, I waited for the last second. About an That's hour true. before we started. You're, like, you're, you're like you're like the kid who hasn't done his own work. And you're like filling it out before the teacher comes to and collect. Ga- Gary's, <laughs> the, Gary's the angry teacher. Absolutely accurate. <laughs> Absolutely accurate description. I, I put it off to the last second. I was Well, here's the problem is I was told that the games were 30 to 45 minutes long. So I was like, oh, I can just bang those out in a day. And then I realized that like no, some, these are like, some of them, some are like two hours long. Like, yeah, the, yeah. The the but, ghost stream was like two hours. The other one was like two hours. And then did they have to be it. banged out? No, because a normal human being that it just plays video games for fun. Sinner's likes, the angry teacher. Likes games. So that's that's fine. Angry teacher. <laughs> just... Like I told you though, the next game, the next game, I don't care what the next game is. I'm starting it today. Like I'm going to start playing it early mm. so that I don't have this problem again. I need to be able to well, like join in the. I don't believe you, but. Up. I'm lagging now. My internet is having issues. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the bullshit detector's going off. Yeah, I'm faking an internet outage so I can get away from yeah, yeah, Teacher yeah. Sino. Yeah, no. I'm it's... sorry, I couldn't download the game. My internet went down for two weeks. You're yeah. cutting out. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, uh. But you did. Did you complete closing shift? You said. I did. But you didn't like it because you think it's. it's I didn't kind know of that like, thing. I, I didn't. I didn't dislike it. No, I I got frustrated with the game mechanics and I felt like a lot of it was mundane and a lot of it was like repetitive there was a point where i had to make the same coffee for customers three separate times with no like tangible dialogue that mattered and i was like why Mm. did i have to make three caramel macchiatos and learn nothing and advance nothing it was like just oh here's some coffees to make to make this game take longer that's how it felt to me so I think I think closing shift might have been a, a difficult one to start with uh, for Chilla's art because Chilla's art tends to make they have several different styles of games that they make, but the most popular one is the one that closing shift fits into and other games that they've made like the convenience store where you're basically just like a person going to their mundane daily job. So the game the game design is it's it's directed to like f- like get you into this flow of like I'm just a person at work doing my boring person things. I'm mopping the floor. I'm main the cash register. I'm doing this, and then all of a sudden, uh, some crazy bullshit happens. It kind of like draws you into a, a sense of false sense of security, and then hits you with the actually everything's not okay. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, but I think that yeah, closing shift might be kind of a tough one to get into because it's by far the hardest mundane job of Angel's art game in my opinion. Yeah, it took me a long time to figure out that. Once you get the coffee thing down, I found it really rewarding. Once I like click once it all, okay. like, all the things yeah. clicked together, I loved it. I was like, "Oh, this is awesome." It still confused mm. me. I still got the cups wrong and stuff. I still made little mistakes, but it is it is I the weirdly, most punishing one though. I weirdly I did, loved I, the coffee making. I will tell you that once I got the hang of it, and then once I could start sling, I was like, "Man, I'm slanging these now." Like I yeah. did yeah. get that. Yeah, I did yeah, get yeah. that feeling. I literally yeah. said those words to someone. I said, "Oh, I'm out here slanging these coffees now. We got this <laughs> figured out." So that was rewarding. I guess maybe I just have to like shift my. I think it's like a mindset thing for me. I think I just need to like 
stop going into it with such a negative mindset and stop being so frustrated by the fact that I have to like try at this. It mm-hmm. reminds me of, it, it reminds me a little bit of doing homework and how like when I play multiplayer games, they come very naturally. So it's easy. I don't have to think. Well, a lot. It's I'm, book like, cool. okay, I'm going to point, I'm going to oh, shoot, I'm going to, I'm going to reload. I'm going to heal. I'm going to, I'm going to learn the basics of this stuff. And there's a lot of like feeling it, but with the games like single player games, you have to do a lot of like thinking, like, what do I do next? What do I, what, mm. is, what are they trying to tell me here? And it's like different. So I just need mm-hmm. to like, embrace, I need to embrace, I think it's going to be good for me and develop me more and both as a person and as a creator to like think more and try more, challenge Could, myself. I like I the fact that was maybe, maybe being like a character growth for Doug. Maybe. Well. Or I'll get upset be. and rage quit the podcast and <laughs> play Home Home Online. We'll see. 50-50. And this game you play as a garbage collector. Doug's like, I quit. Yeah, fuck <laughs> this. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Uh, I've had Sin- some of that recently as well. I don't know what at... Sinnoh's going to make me do next, so go ahead. Sorry, I, I cut I've, you off. I've played some single player games recently, and then a little bit of me's been like, why don't I just load up the League of Legends client? Right, why yeah. Just do one. So I, I, I've been there. I've been there. I get time. you. Yeah. Um, I, can just think of any, I can't think of a multiplayer game I wouldn't rather play than a Chillazard game when I'm playing. And that's the kind of thoughts that I have. It's like, I'd rather be playing like Fortnite right now, I'd rather be playing. League of Legends right now. Like I thought you were going like, to stream it, though, or make a YouTube out of it. I was, but, but I got fucking addicted to playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I was streaming it, and the stream was going really well. See, I, I don't understand. It until, I streamed it until 5 o'clock in the morning, Can't and I understand. went to sleep, and I slept for 6 hours, and I woke up, and I tried to power through the Chillis games. That's like, that was my timeline. My plan was to play DVD, little Texas Chainsaw, and then stream the Chillis R games to make content with them, have people to babysit me so I could be like, what do I do next, chat? What do I do next, chat? And and then I just I got Didn't all do my that. bullshit with Texas Chainsaw, and I stayed on. I streamed until five a.m. That was my problem. So, what do you think of the closing shift, Gary? I loved it. I I mean, you're. I did a tier list of the Chillers Art Games. You'll struggle to find any that I didn't really enjoy. Um, but the closing shift I thought was particularly enjoyable because I loved the coffee. I thought that was really interesting. The only issue I had with the game was I think at one point it bugged because the customers I found so whimsical. Uh, the, the customers the, are very bizarre. Yeah, yeah. the one that dances. The one that dances, bugged, yeah. He bugged for me. So I was like sitting there for like five minutes going, when does he stop dancing? I think I was watching you. Yeah, you that. and it, it just oh. kept going. I was like, oh, this is broken. So I had to redo things. And like, oh, back up. But, I think I was watching that too. That was like a while yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I generally I really enjoyed it. I liked all the little weird scares, like the, the mum with the pram. Is that? I'm oh my God. The... the one where you're at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. And she yeah. Just... I'm so glad oh. you brought that up because I wanted to cut in. That was the worst video game jump scare I think I've ever had. Was that fucking, <laughs> was that dumb, fucking so Can I give you, the I can give you some of the other ones that have like legit shit me up? I, I, I will say, Chillers Art Games, I think have jumped me better than most other games. Like, any games they, I could compare them to, like Outlast, maybe. Like, yeah. I think Bro, the, I was in the, my Chillers seat. Art Games have some of the best atmosphere. I was in my seat. I was sunk down. The lights were off because I'm not recording. And, and I am just trying to get this shit done so I can talk about it on the podcast, right? That's all I, I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm just like trying to do it as fast as possible. And that lady popped out. I saw Jesus. Like my heart would like stop for a minute. It was, I had to stop and collect myself. And I don't think that's ever happened to me with a video game jump scare where I had to like mm-hmm. physically stop playing the game and collect myself. So yeah, if that's yeah. going to happen, maybe I will keep playing these games because that was awesome. Oh, yeah, oh, that's... High record, I mean, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Got that's why they make them mundane so that you mm-hmm. get caught up. It lulls yeah. you into a sense of nothing's like going to happen and it scares the shit out yeah, of you. Yeah, when you're, you're walking down the stairs like you always do on your yeah. way to work, like you've done several times before, and then BAM! I yeah, audibly yelled. Happened. Audibly yeah. screamed. So, yeah. yeah. So, well, it, doesn't, games. it doesn't help that she, like, like charges around the corner completely yeah. realistically and goes like, <gasps> like uh, you did something wrong. Yeah. Jerk. Anyway. So maybe but it yeah, was I, a great game. I don't know. I, I love I love the building atmosphere as well. Like I remember being so paranoid, and that's I think that's like what is a connecting with all of them is I get very paranoid in these games. Like yeah. I think there's a one point you have to find your is it your phone or your keys you you drop? I forget. I think Here's it's your phone because because you then, can hear it right. Yeah, and then like you're walking around the vans <laughs> and stuff. And you're like I don't want to be out here. Like, that's I, at the very beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like I just I yeah I think. For me, I, the closing shift was particularly good at doing that and achieving that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked, um, I liked the coffee bit. Not as much, frankly, as I liked the more 
the, the easier mundane jobs in the other games. Mm. But and so that one was probably honestly it was probably one of my least favorite jobs to do. But I did I did get into a rhythm after a while and I kind of liked it. I also I didn't like those. There was like a group of like six people that came in. And they were like arguing about their order and changing mm. it, and I was just like, "Oh fuck you guys!" And then yeah, the I game like was just that. like, "I, I well, like hating them because it's, like, well, it's like you're a proper in- customer service, right?" Yeah, yeah. Suffer. Yeah, it suffer. Definitely, yeah, suffer it, definitely right. sta- it definitely stayed true to like what a customer service job really feels like. There I also remember when you're like when you're order. closing the shop up one time, and the, the the guy appears at the window, like towards yes. the end. Oh, that's a good one. That's oh, a good shit moment. Me up, that did. That fucking weirdo. A cool memory. I can see his face. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm assuming that we that we all got like the true ending. Yes. I died. I died oh. trying to use the ladder to go up on top of the house. Oh, I, I thought I tricked him. I see. I was con- <laughs> I was convinced that the, so this is my thought process, and I'm gonna play it again. I think and try and get different endings. I've heard there's a bunch of endings, right? Yeah, um, most of the Chizard games has like multiple endings. So I I. Because they made me use the ladder to get on the roof, but then like nothing happened, I assumed that had to do with the ending. So I tried to go for the ladder, and when I went outside, he fucking died immediately. Mm-hmm. I grabbed the ladder, I went outside, and I died. So, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go in to the, up to the roof from the inside, and you drop a brick on his head so he doesn't kill you. And that's how the game ends. See, I thought yeah. you'd use the ladder outside where I used it before. You actually but- use the ladder inside. Okay. Yes, okay. and you actually okay, find yeah. out. I don't know if you. I don't know if you found this or not, but you find out that the this guy who's been stalking you has been living in the store, mm. eating food and like sleeping back there for weeks and weeks for an untold amount of time. You find all of his oh, wow. stuff back there, and so it's a really creepy realization when that happens to be yeah. like, oh, he's been here the whole time, which is something that Chilla likes to do, frankly. Um, and, and a couple of other games they kind of recycle that. That little twist of like works every right. time though. Yeah, it works every time. Yeah, true. <laughs> but honestly, closing shift overall, I I just like the stalker element so much that it kind of made up for the mundane job aspect. And I I would put it on like the Mount Rushmore of Chilla's art games. It would be in like oh, my yeah. top four. Yeah. So leading on from that, in particular, John, you just played through Parasocial for the first time, mm-hmm. and you made a mm-hmm. video of it. So what do you think of Parasocial? Parasocial is my favorite game they've done. Yeah, me too. It's me too. officially dethroned the convenience store for me, which was on top for the longest time. But it's my favorite one. I like the plot of it. You know, it's actually got I, twists. Well, it's it's another stalker scenario, right? But you play as a streamer, which I was like... I mean, you play as like the, the world's worst fucking streamer. Can we talk about <laughs> yeah, that? She's quite bad first, at it. First of all, you're a VTuber. As soon as I saw that, I was like, wow, this really is a horror game, huh? Um, but like oh. she, she just instantly gets oh, online. Fire. She instantly gets online. She has hundreds of viewers, and they just spill in immediately. And they're just like, "What are you playing today? What are you doing?" And I, and I was just like, "What?" And then, but then she plays, and she doesn't say anything, and she plays these shit games. They're fucking crap. Doesn't say anything the whole time. I'm like, where's the entertainment value? And her VTuber is just like, <laughs> like who, who's, who are these three well, thousand people chat watching very this good shit? Either. Chat no, fucking boring. Not, yeah, yeah, that's true. No, but she's but got a cute PNG or whatever. So Yo, maybe people... maybe she was in the Twitch hype challenge and she got front page. <laughs> maybe. You're, you're stopped to think about that? That could be Yeah, it. Well, that, that could explain it. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, the, um, games, the games do suck that you have to play. But I kind of liked it still. Weird. No, I... Yeah, I... I well, some of, one of the... The first game that you end up playing is actually an old Chilla's art game, like a 2D version of it called Akamanto. Um, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is back when Chilla's art was trying to be puppet combo. Which is the era that they moved on from, thankfully. Um, but yeah, they they had a lot of references in Parasocial to their other games. You go to the closing shift barista in you that do, game. You do, yeah, you do, yeah. Yeah, you meet a lot of the characters that you meet in the closing shift, like um, that guy uh, that's point. like, oh, yeah, excuse me, uh, yeah, and the the guy that's like, excuse me, young lady, you should be careful. There's that guy's been staring at you or whatever, and. I like that. I like the the references to other games. It was pretty cool. Like being overheard in the coffee store. Mm-hmm. You could tell mm-hmm. like you're not like having a safe conversation about this. It's very eerie. It yeah, that, you with uh, a lot of dread. Yeah, that was really cool. 
One thing that I think I think that like really stuck with me about Parasocial was that like Chilla did the th the same thing that he's done with other games like the Closing Shift, where like he just makes a bunch of weirdos. Yeah. Like the building manager is a weirdo. Your ex boyfriend's a weirdo. This police officer guy's a weirdo. This guy in a hoodie's a weirdo. There's weirdos, 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 and he really pulls off. Or they they're two brothers actually that make it. Oh, they cool. really pull off this idea. That, like, everyone you meet is untrustworthy somehow. Like, everyone that you meet has it out for you. They're all stalking you. And so, but he's done that before in other games, like The Closing Shift, where you just meet all these weirdos, and you're like, who is it? Who's the real one? And so I was mm. thinking about Parasocial from the same perspective of, like, okay, which one of these is the real bad guy? You know? Is it this person, this person, this person. And for the first time, it's all of them. They all yeah. they all actually are in on it, and I really liked that twist. Yeah, it okay, was okay, like, like oh, no, I? It was like a group effort to fuck you over a little bit. Yeah, which is it was a grand conspiracy. They were being gang stalked. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, quite a fun. It felt like a. I think the reason why I like Parasocial so much is obviously being a streamer. I kind of got that bit, but it feels like a murder mystery with like a surprising. Like, if you really think about it, you're like, oh my gosh. Like, you had to really reason it out a little bit. Yeah. It's not just like, he was the bad one. <laughs> that yeah, one guy. Yeah. That's the bit that I like the most. Because, like, it's the it's the only game I've played of the Chillers Arts where I felt like my state of mind changed as I progressed. Like, I think I blocked yes. the best friend on their phone for I a while. I did too. And then, then the boyfriend creeped me. I was like, okay, let's go back to the friend. Because the well boyfriend's creeping me out now. Yeah, and, uh, and then like, and then I I got the good ending. Thank fuck. Yeah, but like, oh, it was I didn't know who to trust by the end, and it was you know when you realize, as you say, John, everyone's in on it. You're like, oh god, it gets real well, tense towards the end. And it gives you it gives you all those scenarios like like you when you're running from your apartment and you're like, mm. I know who it is, and then you run to the build. It's like you run to these people, the building manager, the police officer, and they're just like, hey, is everything okay? And then you start running from them. And it was a really cool, like, escalating chase scene at the end. It was really yeah, well done. Yeah, uh, I liked, the, I liked the chase when you know when you go to the shop and you have to walk back. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, that's so tense. Yes. Yeah. And going through those doors, like I, I will say, like as a as a as the level design, especially in um, Parasocial, was particularly good. Those doors went through the elevator. Mm -hmm. Very tense. But it was the really part... well constructed. The part where the guy runs under the elevator and just stands mm. next to you. What Duh. the fuck? I like I I jumped. I don't Me normally too. jump, but I jumped. Yeah. I think I gasped and and yelled too. <laughs> yeah, that was I think, crazy. Pa Parasocial was fantastic. Yeah, I, I really. I, think it's I, the rem best I remember game checking. And... I remember checking the wardrobe a lot. Yeah. I was very disturbed by the the character's lack of possessions because you go into all these empty closets and you're like, do you own anything? Mm. And then you get to the part where they're like, I need a weapon. And I'm like, well, you should have luck because you own no items, apparently. <laughs> I don't know where you're supposed to get a weapon. Yeah. You really don't like this lady, huh? This like well, bad YouTuber they're, they're who failed upwards. It makes upwards. no sense. They just, they, it's like they just wake up in the morning. They go stream their shitty little game. They don't talk the whole time <laughs> with their little VTuber. And then they go open the fridge and they're like, there's nothing in there. And it's like, go buy some food. <laughs> They can't. You go to the Live convenience store, you get chased down by your stalkers. They, you stream for like 20 minutes, and then you're like, that's enough. The hard days were completed. <laughs> Fuck you. Anyway, but it was really Excellent. good. Very good <laughs> game. Dude, I'm loving this. I'm having a great time. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, but that, that was, yeah, that's my Mount Rushmore too with Closing Shift. So here's, so speaking of the Mount Rushmore now, I know this one's a bit of a controversial one, but for me, it's on my Mount Rushmore. Um, I to ghost train. Ooh. I, yeah, I can't ride you on that crazy train. So I so I'll, I'll say my op opinion on it a little bit. I it. think it was one of the more creative and interesting of the Chiller's Art games. Um I believe it's very folklore based. Mm -hmm. Um on yeah. like Japanese mm -hmm. culture sort of thing. And I just thought it was a delightful journey. Um I really liked a lot of the clever things they did in there. Um, you know, it's very mundane. You're on a train traveling back and forth from, I guess, work. Um, and you start to, weird occurrences start to happen, like different people disappearing. The person you rode the train with vanishes for a bit. 
There's a mm-hmm. drunk, there's a child that like you can't find their parent. There's a guy who wants to catch cicadas. Yeah, that's said the cicada thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's very weird. Um, yeah. And then you later on find out that they've all died, and that this is like a, a train to the other other place. Yeah, the um, afterlife. Yeah, and I I just thought it was very very creative. Uh, I I really liked um, the atmosphere a lot of the time, like walking up and down the carriages. Things I was kind of expecting things to get really, and they, sometimes it did get quite tense. Mm-hmm. Um, I particularly liked when you have to return the items to the characters. Yeah, and you, you can look see at the, the ref- and the reflections. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, how you figure out. I like that I thought, too. I thought that was really clever, and I also um, I loved the musical like puzzle where you have to like listen because you've been oh, playing it for listen. a long time, and you have to remember the same track you heard in the train station, and then you start listening to, it to figure it out to get the, the the good ending, or you'll get a bad ending. And I just I thought that was a really Another really creative and clever um, mechanic. I thought it was really enjoyable. Um, and when you start really thinking about it, you start getting really paranoid about, is this the song that I heard? I don't think it is. And I, was, I, was, I got it right. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. I remember, I think I carp in the, the comments, be like, yep, that's the right one. Like, after I was guessing. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And then I thought the ending got really nice. And I did like the ending uh, where you're yeah. on the railroad tracks and you got yes. the phone booth. Yeah. I thought that the only was thing I, that The only thing cool. I was stuck was like, do I just walk down the tracks? It felt like I've always been told not to walk on the tracks, like since a kid. So it took me a lot to decide, well, there's Spain nothing else rules. for me to go. So I'll walk down this way. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really, 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 really cool game. Um, but I know a lot of people didn't like it. I wouldn't say that I disliked it, but I would say that it was like a pretty meh experience for me i think because it's probably the most adventure game like of chilla's games like for me the horror factor was kind of missing i I didn't dislike it like i liked the weird characters that you meet on the train uh i liked the ending sequence and i liked the realization that like this train's the afterlife everybody's dead you know that kind of sixth sense type of thing Mm. um but i just i kind of felt like the journey wasn't that interesting in terms of the gameplay and i didn't feel like there was like a threat or something that i should be worried about and i really like that part about chilla's games i guess like you know how you said earlier chilla's games make you feel really paranoid and stressed Mm. and stuff i didn't get that with ghost train and so i didn't really particularly resonate with it so i will will say like when when i if i see something clever that i think is unique to a game which i haven't experienced before my i get my game design brain goes, oh, I love this. This is different. This is, like, creative. So I, I start giving it leeway, and mm. I'll, I'll accept a lot. It is creative. I, I do yeah. like that it is a different style of Chilla's art games. Uh, yeah. Like, it's it's not just the same thing over and over, mm. which is good. It, it felt kind of old Chilla's art to me. And I think it did. there's yeah. been improvements since then. Um, mm-hmm. I think maybe sometimes... Uh, sometimes with like kind of puppet combo and chills art games or horror games in general sometimes if it's too much like certain iconography feels a bit kind of like yeah we just start doing stuff because it's kind of horror i uh, almost a bit like make it kind of tie into the overall plot line if possible but i know that there's like a lot of like deeper stuff behind ghost train that is related to like you have to do the kind of ending a lot to get a lot of the backstory because you have to keep doing different options Right, Which I kind of wish it wasn't right? so like kind of backloaded of having to basically just replay the ending over and over, just to sort of find out a bit more of like the the backstory. Because I think there was like a fairly you know, a little backstory going on, but the first time you complete the game, if you get the good ending, you might be a bit like, huh. So I guess he's like dying. Is like kind of right. what I was like. Like I'm guessing it's like yeah. a train to death, basically. Yeah. But then it, the old guy at the station kind of implies like this place isn't for you, so it's like he's maybe not actually dead, but his wife is <laughs> yeah and he's kind of like yeah. reliving a little bit of that yeah but i i think since then there's been improvement you know and i, I had a, a problem with like puppet combo games for example there was one that was really highly lauded that oh i can't remember what it was called but it, for me i was like i'm spending most of my time in this game reading text documents and i hate that in horror games i hate it so much hmm i'm trying to think of what that would be is it like an orphanage or something Oh, the glass and staircase. Like a, yeah, and it goes on fire at one I was, point. I wasn't a fan of that one, yeah. Oh, it's just so much reading. And I'm like, you basically, just write a visual novel if you're going to do a visual Gary, novel almost Gary, at this point, you know? Have you played the glass staircase, Gary? I haven't played many puppet combo games. Okay. I've played a, a handful, and I've never really enjoyed many of them. 
so I've just kind of a, like Chiller's Art. I love. I've loved every pretty much one I've played. Whereas Public Combo, I've I've liked a couple of them. But other mm-hmm. ones, I'm just like, yeah, I've kind of. It's the same thing every time for me with Puppet Combo. Right. Well, the the last staircase is definitely different. Um, it's more of like a survival <laughs> horror game. It's kind of a fixed camera angle type of take on things, and there's okay, a bit like where they did babysitter combat. bloodbath, right? Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Babysitter bloodbath, um, nun massacre, and mm, I'm trying to think of what. Oh, uh, power drill massacre are probably there. Mm most well-known but they, they they do some other stuff too but yeah i didn't really like class staircase yeah um, um and then i guess the final one for chill's art would be jisatsu yes jisatsu yes which now again this... controversial one from what i can yeah well this is like the their first game in a while that's gotten mixed reviews i think mm-hmm. their last game before this that got mixed reviews was teke teke and that game was developed with another developer uh who i, I think chill just like maybe just published it because it doesn't seem like a teke teke is like not a chill art game from, so, from what I I don't, i've not played that one oh, okay like they had their name on it but you can just tell that they either didn't develop it or they weren't very involved because it's very very different um but yeah uh this is the first mixed review game since then and i can see why after playing it because it is a big departure but I thought it was a good one. I thought it, I, yes. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Yay! I liked it. Okay. Yay! Because okay. I, I I saw Dan's review when I finished it. I went onto the Steam page. Just Our friend Dan, saying, Daniel Sirachi, yeah. and and he left a review being like, "This is terrible." And I was like, "Um, really? hang on, really? I need to get what was it he said? There was one thing that we were all laughing at in my chat. Um, not, this isn't like at derision of Dan or something, but he described it as it's an Emika light." I'm like, what the fuck is Emika? It's a, it's a what? Emika. It's a game, Emika. So apparently it's, oh, like, it's like a game called isn't Emika. That, isn't that when they put warm water up your ass? Oh, that's, that's an, an anima. anima. That's an anima. <laughs> Just checking in to say that's an anima, oh, Gary. I got you. God. Good lord. <laughs> Gary Bunn always yeah, has Gar- to bring it back to the toilet, you know? Dan, Dan thought that this game was like having warm water up your ass. That's what he meant, Gary. Great job translating. I don't need to help. Um, somebody, yeah, somebody's fair. responded to Dan's review with like a jester clown emoji. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, no, no, I do disagree. Uh, I do okay. disagree with his review, but I have, I have not played Emika, so um, no. Yeah, Jisatsu I thought was um, very different from the other um, Chilla art games that I decided to play, but I it's I loved it so much. It's a found footage game. Um, it's not like the other Chilla's art games where like, it's like, you're a barista at a coffee shop. You're a cashier at a convenience store. It's like, you're just an urban explorer with a camera and it's found footage style and you're a urban exploring this abandoned building and you find out that there's actually some pretty creepy history there. Um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And William Shakespeare is in the toilet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't notice that part. William Shakespeare. <laughs> Oh, oh the just, book? No, the, the guy, the, like, you know, the hole. Yeah. The, the oh, that speaks to yeah. Your house. Okay, 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 I get what you were saying. Find thee, and I was like, oh, okay, Shakespeare. Art I'll go. thou yeah, able yeah, yeah. to find it? Yeah. I enjoyed that. Um, I, I really liked the set pieces in the game as well. Um, I think mm-hmm. it jumped me, oh, like, proper shit me up about three or four times. I remember one very vividly in the bathroom, like, something's in the mirror. I think it goes past in the middle oh, of you yeah. in there. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I, I just remember that. it jumped the shit out of me. Um, I also really liked the creativity, because obviously it's found footage, but there's that black square. I yeah, love the that sensor. Too. Yeah. The sensor. I thought, yeah. I thought that was so creatively creepy. Yeah. Of like whenever it's like a person or something and it ma- it makes like a weird noise well, it, when you're close to it, but it's just yeah, like there was a some, sensor. something demonic that the that the, the footage is covering up. I just thought that was yeah, really It's like corrupting the footage or it's like yeah. it doesn't want to be filmed or seen or yeah. it's interesting. Cuz at the at the very end um it does that a couple times like for for the the pictures of I assume you're like the bodies of your mother and father. Uh, yeah, I think of, so, in yeah. The, in the tape. But then it also does it for Jesus Christ, 
the statue of Mother Mary and St. Francis of Assisi at the end. And I was just like, so are we dealing with like a demon here that's just like, you're not going to look upon their holy countenance or, that's, or that's what? That's what I took it as, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of creepy. So I kind of almost viewed it as like, the, the house has a lot of like, very like Christian iconography. Mm. Yes. And then the, yeah. the, the kind of graves underneath the house, the person that gets revived kind of looks like Jesus. He does. Yeah. And I was like, is this supposed to be like, what if Jesus was resurrected in Japan, but was not like a holy benevol de benevolent like a good guy. person? Yeah. Just like a weird twist on it where it's like, he's kind of like, like a, a demon now. What if Jesus was a serial killer? <laughs> yeah, basically. They're just like, screw it. Yeah. It was like this yeah. one Japanese family that was really into like Christianity just like happened to be on you top You want him so bad? Well, here he is. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to harvest your organs. Damn. Yeah. So I, I thought that was like. I kind of, I took it as it was like a possessed homeless man. Okay. Like, I took it as it was a squatter yeah. that had okay. just been yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That was just. It's interesting like to think of it people. like there was like a. You are right. He did look similar to how Jesus. Kind of Jesusy. Yeah. He Jesus did. Yeah. I didn't make that connection. And I was like, is this like a really bizarre take on things? Because like the house is so very like Christian, and of course Japan yes. there is Christianity, but it's not as common there. So I was like, hmm, interesting. It was an interesting choice. Yeah. Because yeah, there's crosses everywhere that yeah, at one point yeah. you have to it's like turn them up. Right. Yeah. 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 So I don't cross. It's like you're inverting Jesus, and now he's going to be resurrected as evil. That's what I was oh thinking. Of. I remember there's one bit where you can see like a figure in the window as you're walking down the hallway. And yeah. It's like, mm, oh, yes. and I've got, and you walk in there, and it's a mannequin instead of a hat on it. I think I saw that. Like, yeah, yeah, because it's your like, it's your grandma. I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Or the I, not your grandma, but the person who made the tapes, yeah. grandma. I kind of called it actually the first time I walked past it. I was like, "Chat, there's going to be a point where you walk past this and it's going to be a jump scare." And I was right. It was like at one point, it's not a mannequin; it's a person. And I was yeah, like, "Okay, yeah. well, I, you can predict it a little." But it's still also that bit where like the lights go off for a solid like thirty seconds to a minute and stuff yes. like going on. And, you and just I was hear like, a bunch I, of shit. "I hated it." I was like, "I appreciated it," as because I did a similar thing in night blights in the car and stuff. Like I. I punish people for like weird stuff. And when I see other people, I was like, I just loved it. I, I, I thought Jasatsu was fantastic. Doug, what'd you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause you played this one. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. It was... How far did you get? <laughs> I didn't get very far. <laughs> I did like, I, I think I had a bug too. Cause like everything was super silent. Like I wasn't getting any audio at first. So I had to like restart. Mm. It was, yeah, I was, I'm going to play it. And I will give you more detailed thoughts on it on our next season. Uh, but ultimately, I thought it was it was interesting. It was it didn't feel like it felt poorly optimized. And I have a really nice oh, PC, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know why yeah. why I'm getting so many. Like it it really made it hard for me to like really want to. There's some of the so, games that I can't stream because they just does they just don't run on OBS. They just yeah, don't run. Was that was right, one really something anyway. that a lot of negative reviews were saying was that the game wasn't very well optimized. Yeah. So Men yeah. the menu systems in particular are really bad. I've noticed. Yeah. Like yeah, like the strong. frame rate is like yeah. I don't know what's going on. I don't know just, why that is. I, yeah, mean, I was getting like, I was getting like freezes and I was like interacting with like doors. I was making the game freeze and stuff. It was really weird. So I don't know. Mm. I I would suspect. Too many update functions, not enough coroutines. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> That's what that I was, was gonna say that too. Was, that was kind of yeah, that was kind of my inkling yeah. as well. So I'm actually, glad you said I, that I, didn't. I do have something to comment that you might be interested in, Gary. Because uh, while I was playing Parasocial, I noticed like when you, when you look down, I, I was looking at like the arm, and I was like, "Holy high poly count! Like there's so many polygons." Oh, I, and, I should have paid more attention to it. Yeah, like, there's, like, a billion polygons on the arm, and I was like, why is the poly count so high? And someone was telling me in the comments, I can't remember exactly what they said, but they were saying that what they guessed happened was that, like, this was, like, a, a more detailed model that had been, like, um, I don't know the proper oh, re, terminology, re but, like... politize I think it's something like that, yeah, where you just, like... Yeah, it's like it, they, they basically like, it. down downscaled it, yeah, yeah, or whatever. And basically, like normally when you do that, you go in afterwards and kind of clean it up and smooth it out, so you don't have mm -hmm. those crazy poly counts. But Chilla's art has such a high output that um, they didn't do that, and so it just kind of looks like that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I wonder how many times that happens though, where they just kind of like 
throw something in and then they just don't really clean it up and then mm. it causes those frame rate issues or that bad it could be something like that it depends like because poly count can be a problem yeah yeah i was um a developer i follow on twitter he's like making a game called rust valley his name's corpse pile he's really talented mm. he's made a lot of really cool indie games um he's making one called rust valley and he like uh realized that like he had this one um model that he imported from something and it had like an absurdly high poly count and he mm. removed it and he said his frame rate doubled on his tests and i was like damn so i guess it really can cause a huge oh, issue yeah. like it depends yeah. how much culling you've got in there as well like um I noticed that in Alan Wake, as, as an example, like I started to have some weird issues towards the end of the game, where it was like, it felt like it was struggling to load things. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I fell through the floor, because like it just hadn't, it hadn't loaded. Properly. Oh, yeah. I, and, and, I could, and I could see the one, I was like, there's a lot of this world, I can see a lot, like, even now. Like, I feel like it should be turning off chunks of the map whilst I'm not near it. Um, so sometimes you need some culling in your game just to kind of hide stuff. Night, Night Blast use it as an example again. It uses a lot of culling. There's one issue I found in the game where if you stand on top of the bathtub and look down, like the entire house disappears because that's mm -hmm. like it's trying to register things. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe the Chiller's Art games need to look more because I use Unity, I believe, and that's got a lot of built-in yeah. culling stuff in it. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think part of the issue is that like they they because they put out five games last year, I think, which is mm. like a, a really high creative output. I mean, so I think they kind of cut corners a lot with stuff like that maybe yeah they, yeah. I, I, I hope they would like take it take a step back and just kind of optimization because they use like the similar engine like well, they use the same engine they i think they use the mm -hmm. same blueprint per game at least a starting base like their character controllers are basically the same they, things and yeah so, they, i have so seen could, like similar uh models between yeah games their, their menu systems obviously all the same and stuff so what they could do is just take a step back make one have a better menu system like right. optimize the main menu and stuff optimize all that stuff and then for the rest of them, you've got it sorted. The next time, sort your character controller out. Then the next rest of your games has a better character controller. Yeah. But exactly. Who am I, I've I've released one game. Who, who am I to say? Could have, could have said it better myself. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I, generally, I, actually, I love the game, so I can't shit talk too no, much. I, like every single one I've played, I've loved. Yeah, I I I think from, when it comes to Jisatsu, like. I get the mixed reaction that, like, it wasn't, you know, you're being stalked in, in the city at your day job as a construction worker or whatever. But uh, I really liked the departure, and I thought they did a good job. And they don't always knock it out of the park on their, mm. uh, you know, off games for me, so. I feel this like sometimes you nice all just surprise. want the same game again. It's like, just play they the do. game you've already played. Just play that game again. They do want it's, the same game. I, I, I want, I want like, that's what indie's about. Indie games are about trying new things. Like maybe I it agree. wasn't perfect, but there there was even if you didn't like the game, I think there were some creative things in there that you should be able to appreciate. True. I yeah, want I think... Dynasty Warriors ten, Gary. I bought the <laughs> oh, same thing. I would love it. I need to play. I haven't played Dynasty Warriors <gasps> since like five or six. The ninth one went open world and it wasn't very good. So oh. they've they've been cooking up the tenth one, which is coming out later this year, I think. As long as it's because I want a single player. I don't I don't want to play online with people. I want to. Let me fight Lu Bu. Let me do a character creator. Let me make a warrior and fight Lu Bu. You do not pursue Lu Bu. You know bad things happen if you pursue Lu Bu. It's, it's Lu, Lu Bu! Bu. <laughs> Every so often I still watch a compilation of all the Dice of Warriors 2 and 3 quotes where it's like the voice actor had no idea what they were doing voice yeah. acting for, so they're just like, Take this! You know, they're like totally <laughs> off for what it's supposed to be. But Oh, the soundtracks are fantastic in Dice Warriors I'm as well. Gonna... I'm gonna pull a Gary right now and be like, I don't know who that is. Oh, who are those? <laughs> and therefore, it shouldn't exist. I've never heard of that game. You never heard of Disney Warriors? No, I have. I but but I I never played it. I don't know who Lu Bu is. Well, it's Who's funny that you've never played it because for our next. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was actually going to joke that we were doing Umineko for the next book club, but oh my god! Uh, one day, yeah. one day, I would maybe quit. like two or three. <laughs> I would quit. You'd love it. If you gave it a chance and you got past the beginning where it's just like, this is my aunt. This is also this is my, my aunt. uncle. This is my this uncle's is my cousin. Uncle. This is my yeah. uncle's cousin's I think, wife. I think you might have told me what this is before, but I can't remember. It's my favorite vision novel. It's a murder mystery. It's like uh, Zero oh, I... Escape. Yes. Yes. Dangarampa vibes. Yeah. Dangarampa. And nobody's fucking played it. But one day. 
You can Monday. pause us now. But... Yes. But no, for this book club, uh, I have decided to pick... We I think we had a discussion recently about the old internet. And mm. a lot of us have this thing where the internet now is like, there's two things you do in the internet. Social media and shopping. And it's like, do you remember the old days of the internet where you could like just find a cool little website that was yeah. about something or like a forum? It didn't feel like everything on the forum had to be blasted out to people who are bots or don't give a shit. It just stayed within the forum. And you... You got to yeah. live on like cyberspace in like a little corner. Well, there is a game that I played a while ago called Hypnospace Outlaw, <gasps> which is kind of like a mystery game based on the internet in the 90s. So that's what I decided to pick for Hypnospace Hi Outlaw. Hypnospace okay. Outlaw. Nice. Now, I have heard good things about this game, actually. Some people have recommended it to me over the years. I think just yesterday somebody recommended it to me again. So. Mm. Good, yeah. because I, I think it would be a very good John Tulf game. Um, mm, if you okay. decide to play that on your uh, second I think channel. I There's a character in it called Zane that is like, for me, Zane is like John when he was a teenager, is what I imagine Zane is okay, like. Okay, so. that is really funny that you said that, because I uh, I follow the developer of Hypnospace Outlaw on Twitter. Oh, yeah. um, and I, I'm familiar with the Zane character, and actually, there was um, there was a photo that I uploaded to Twitter of like a binder that I found when I was like 12, mm. and it was like, "Keep out if you're not, you can't open my binder if you're not cool." And it has like oh me with God. sunglasses, and I'm like, "Yeah, eat shit, nerds." And somebody tagged him, and they're like, "This is Zane." Oh my and so God! Then he, <laughs> and so then he followed me, and they have like an account for Zane, and he was just, and he made the Zane account was just like, "Well, this is totally me," and all this shit. So I'm excited uh, to finally meet him. Yeah. Now yes. I'm more excited. It's, it's to John. Play. Now I I'm swear, this character is teenage John, like for real. It's hilarious. He's a great okay. character as well. He's very okay. teenager on the '90s internet. How long is awesome. it? How, how long does it take to complete? So, just yeah. I ended up with like seven and a half hours, but there was some time where I had like turned it on and then like walked away from the computer. So about six okay. hours, seven hours. But I, I really Two enjoyed streams. it. Cool, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh fun stream game. Um, lots of little secrets as well. You end up kind of investigating things and uh it's very faithful of like the kind of nineties internet, but has like a cool style to it. It reminds me there's a lot of, like kind of clip art and like Nice. Welcome to the kids zone kind of stuff. And it's got like a kind of Pokemon website at one point, so I hope you guys enjoy it because we're all of a certain age, mm. so a lot of the imagery will be familiar to us of our childhoods, I imagine. So yeah, Hypnospace Outlaw. If you want to play it out there as well, if you're watching the podcast for the next time, hopefully we'll have a little chat about it. You can see John yeah, as a hopefully. teenager. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Right, I'm, yeah, excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to play it because I've actually had it on my list for a while. So. Um, yeah, well, that'll be I the next. Book, club. uh... book club's fun. It's currently seventy percent off. Oh, oh no, Sean! I should get it right now then. Well, it's yeah, still... it's very cheap. It's like five dollars or something. <clears throat> yeah, when I looked, it was twenty. So I'm gonna get it. Oh right my now. gosh! Twenty. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is much better. Yeah. I'll... I'm not sure if I have it. I'll. I'll have to look. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it it's on sale till the. It's on sale till the twenty six. So. Hell yeah! Oh, sweet. I'll after this. Yeah, I'm getting it right now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's All right. Sale. Yeah, I'll, I'll and play then, through it and... and yeah, thanks, and thanks, Lloyd. I hate it. Uh, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the next book, Club Doug gets to pick. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. What's Doug going to pick? I have faith it'll be a fun one. I think I've, I've been cooking um, since day one, but I've been really cooking like what I want to go. Because I think that like I got to set the tone with my first pick. Right? And the, the easy, the low-hanging fruit would be to pick Ghostbusters to Troll John. Or pick uh, Project Playtime to troll Gary and kind of yeah. everybody, if I'm being honest. Or I don't even know what I would pick. Maybe Texas I'll Chainsaw quit. to troll Lloyd. <laughs> you, could, you know? Yeah. You don't have to pick a game that you've played before. You could pick a game that, like, I've always wanted to play that, and we could all play it together. True. I've yeah, always wanted to play that, but my friends won't join me, and then you can force us. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. True. Like, I could true. really force you guys into something weird if I wanted to. Like, we could just check out some white noise, maybe, or like, I don't know. We got a lot of Oh, hands my God. Like, I'm gonna. I got the first one already. I already know what I'm picking first, and I think that it's gonna be well received. I think we'll have Ooh, a lot of a fun. Hit. Oh, well, next I, season we can find out what it is. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have bad. faith. I think it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. yeah. I pro. I promise that for my. I'm not promising anything after my first pick. I might, depending on how much I hate all after the games. After that, he's phoning it in. Yeah. Okay. DVD. TCM this week, guys. Playing the oh PTV, guys. Swift. <laughs> I pick Dead by Daylight. Yeah, Swift boys. <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, the first pick, at least the first pick, I think is going to make everybody happy. We're going to have a lot of fun. Okay. All right, all right. I'm excited. Okay. Well, I think that'll do I, it. Our best episode yet. Say, best yeah, season I'd say yet. that probably our best. I think it's our best I would season, say. For sure. Yeah, I mean, that was particularly good. We just keep yeah. upping our game. They say uh, we can't get any better, uh, and then we just prove them wrong. Yeah. They say we've <laughs> peaked, and then we go even higher. Yeah. There is no peak. Not for us. No. Just just a, 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 an eternal ascent. Yeah. <laughs> the stonks just keep going up and up. The stonks. <laughs> rising. Well. All right. Thank Bye. you, everybody, for, for tuning in. We had, a, we had a great time talking about everything that we talked about. This is a long episode. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys next time for season 45. Uh, on behalf of me, John Wolf, Gary the Hot Cross, Sino Beats, and Doug Running Man. We'll see you next time. Hugs and kisses. Hugs and kisses, everyone. Hugs Bye. and kisses. Bye.